All right, grinders, a little under the weather, but we're gonna get through tonight, baby. Hit that like button, let's go. New music coming your way. Hit that like button, share it out, grinders, let's do this. The new month gaming grind house. All right, grinders, a little under the weather, but we're gonna get through tonight, baby. Hit that like button, let's go. on the rise now Woo! endless celebrations all in my house yeah. levitating now i'm super duper fly now yeah. london boy but they see where i reside now put the time in while you always yell a time out yeah. and forget it cause i know i'm coming with it you were sitting you were wishing i was handling my business yeah. now i got the ball like harry potter playing quidditch and my buzz is so humongous you would think that happens in there Damn. So I'm going mainstream. to more gamers on all platforms. Uh, Edison, which is doing more with less. Everything that we are doing with our content, with our our cloud and the Oh, hi. It's me again. Yeah, that's always, that's always been a hit on the I missed you. Yeah, I don't know if I'd say always. Like, I think we've gone through times where we've done mud, it. Not the but, but now you have to know that is that, that's a fair, I think it's okay fair to say. It is, it is fair to say. And,
if Bill Clinton wins, everything would turn around. It's just not true that if we go off and just build great games, all of a sudden you're going to see console share shift in some dramatic way. We lost the worst generation to lose in the Xbox One generation, where everybody built their digital library of games. I hear. Enough, stop, 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 Uh, it's a core business for Stop. us. Enough! Hit that like button, new music coming your way! In a world of the pixels and dreams Where heroes rise and fight the schemes You're the console that lights up the screen With every game a magical team doing whoa yo first i have to say yeah oh there it is yeah ghost yo ghost in the garage gaming man yeah thank you so much for that super chat man happy easter to you happy easter to everybody it has been a crazy weekend i'm still fighting under the weather i'm not feeling that well right now but i wanted to power through and give you guys a show and ghost like yo i'm like speechless man thank you so much man and ghost while you're here i got i got the shout out song for you i made a song for you and all the top grinders, I wanted to hear it. Here you go, Ghost, while you're here. Yo, to all them, Robert Lawrence and Michael Moradian for being the ultimate gifting. 
Blinders. Thank you, Ghost in the Garage Gaming, and Twisted go. Sign, and SNK for being the ultimate chatting grinders. Shout out to you from Gaming Grindhouse. There he is, Ron M. Oh, shit. Thank you again, man. Yo, shout out to you. Ron M with the, the 10 gifted gaming VIP grinders. Yo, thank you again. Yo, bringing in me first. There he is. Jisom, Ed Wood, Kana, Matty Beast. Welcome, man. Oh, my goodness. What a night. And you guys, and then Twisted Sync. I saw you, Twisted Sign. Where are you? I got you, man. You got. Uh, you guys are going incredible. Yo, Reaper, member for eight months VIP. Welcome, man. I didn't even start the show yet. I got to thank all... You grind this. You get me through, man. I was, I was so, I was like, oh man, do I do this show? I'm like, so not feeling it. So feeling well, man. I'm like, oh, these allergies and just, it's so much going on, man. Oh, but yo, you guys, thank you so much. Twisted Sync, sign. How you doing with the five bucks? He goes, Phil took Xbox from third party to the third place to third party. Happy 10th anniversary. Phil Tramp Stamp Spencer. You know what? It's a holiday. It's Easter. I'm going to do, I'm for everybody that's coming in here right now, for everybody that's walking in here, you guys here early, you guys here came in on time, you're going to get the video. I'm going to do a, a, a premiere of this, but I, for Twisted, for Super Chat, for Ghost coming in here, and Ron, yo, you guys here from right from the beginning, dude, I'm doing a new song. I'm doing a new song right now. I'm playing it. And shout out to the new Ultimate VIPs, Quest 444, and Maniolas upgraded to Ultimate Grinders. You get these songs and more as they come out but i wanted this this one to turn this one came out so good when i was making it i was like you know what i i want to i want to reveal this to all the vips in here but uh you know what let's just 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 do a little bit a, a little sneak peek here of um of this song actually let me do this here we go here it is oh yeah <coughs> dude allergies i might ugh. let me get this thing going on here get a little uh where is this one so i uh, we took this one so the Ch Tramp Stamp one, I'm going to do that one premiering tomorrow. That is going to be for uh, all members, VIPs and Ultimate Grinders. That one's going to be a special member uh, preview. We're going to do that one. We're going to do that one. I'm going to do that tomorrow because I want to play that one special. I want you guys to hear it because it came out so good. But I expanded on this one. You know, our wonderful Chicago Phil Ness. We're going to do that song here, the full Game of Illusions. Welcome, JC, to the VIPs. Here it comes. New music, remixed, the extended version. Get your candles out. Wave them in the air because it's going to be one of those songs for Phil Ness in his 10 years of tramp stamping. Here we go. Uh, here's a land of make-believe where dreams collide. Oh, man. Extended There's version, a baby. Man with a vision, selling stories deep inside. From a single world with every game he creates. There he but is. But beneath the surface is lies away. Candles the out. Used to die. When everyone plays, we all become winners. As his illusions come up, the truth is delivered. Oh, man. Ooh, yeah. Ex 
extended version. Let's go. Candles. He's got a groove that's hard to resist. Tramp stamping, 10 years. Phyllis is the master. He talks the list. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. He'll take you to a rooftop party oh, all night. Oh, man. Let's go. Hands in the air. Feel this. Feel this. Party like Phoenix. Get down on the floor. Tragic Love song. Signing all night. We're begging for more. Switching PlayStation. The game still bling. But Xbox can't compete. Oh, we're not done. We're not done. Extended. Eleven years, man. Tramp stamping. The bridge, baby. Xbox is switching lanes. Ain't no turning back. Hardware in his game. He's leaving that behind. Cloud is where he hopes he will find. Success. I feel you're the king of the board. Phil, yes. Extended new version of Phil Ness right there. Party like Phil Ness. And just know that the songs that go up to the Ultimate Grinders um, tier, the Grinds Pass, as we call it here, um, we uh, when you get those, you get songs day one. And the and any songs that get released will have the lyrics in the description. That's suggested by one of the Grinders, so that will be there as well. Um uh, this song ain't it. Just wait, don't want to hear. He doesn't want. He doesn't want sad songs about Phil Spencer. He wants the. He wants the uh, the booty songs. Don't worry. There's 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 songs coming. This song we got. There's a whole blend. It's it's a, it's it's a it's a whole blend of songs. All different types there. But um, but yeah, it's it's a, it's, it's it, we'll put those candles in the air for Phil Spencer. It's sad. It's sad watching them just like just fall face first. But then yeah, we got some songs coming. I I the Tramp Sam ones. Oh my god, that one. That's going to be epic. But yeah, Ultimate Grind is definitely get access to all the songs. And let's get into these topics. Thank you again, Ghost. Thank you for all the new members. Thank you, Ron M. Thank you, Twisted. And thank you, uh, JC, for being a VIP. And yeah, shout out to the VIPs. Here they are, the VIP Grinders. You could upgrade to the Ultimates to get the Grinds Pass and get the music. Thank uh, <laughs> you, good. And uh, yeah, I'll update definitely for the Platinum and Golden Grinders here for going over a year. Yo, man, this... This is the grindhouse, baby. This is we built this. We built this. You built this. I'm just here, just with the microphone. You built this, baby. You did it. Full grind board tonight. That's right. I hope I get through, man. I don't cough up. <coughs> oh man. Oy. And then ultimate grinders. We just got two brand new ultimate grinders there. I should have a shout out to them as well. Those are the um, you know, shout out to who uh, we had the quest for four four will be on there and many of us. Shout out to you for being Ultimate Grinders, getting songs day one from the gaming Grindhouse, Grindhouse Records, also known as Grind's Pass. But now, let's get to some topics here. Oh, my goodness. And there might be some new, there might be some music, you know, keep you appealed. You never hear, you never know what I'm in the mood to play. Definitely with Jim Ryan going out, man. Yo, thanks, Twisted. Bills are happy. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I got my water here. So, let's start with the first one. Um, you know, we, we, I talked a little bit about this, um... Uh, on Friday, shout out that you shout out to everybody came through on Friday. There, um, we have um, yeah, it's a Tokyo Dance Better Finder a thing. Um, that's right, that's right, LM. I'm putting out more more content than grind game passes. Grinds pass. You got you got day one music right there created from my hands. There's no, there's, I'm I'm behind the frosted glass on this one. Pal World loses 97 percent of his Steam players since launch. Grind is. Um, did we see this coming or not? Um, do, uh, w w we, you know, there's only so many, uh, times and, you know, our good friend, uh, Mr. Eastwood, uh, you know, said it best, 
uh, when he did his uh, wonderful, um, you know, where he lives here on the on the game of Rhino House board. But like, you know, how many times are we going to be playing Pal Worlds? On their little Goo Goo Gaga. You know, I seem like, and the reason why we talk about this Goo Goo Gaga game of Pal Worlds, um, because it was in Game Pass. Oh. And you know what happens? As soon as, as soon as Microsoft made claim to Pal Worlds as being some sort of success, what happened? Shit finger came out. Booty, don't touch, don't talk, talk about Pal Worlds. Booty. Aw, oh, shit, Booty. Come on. It was doing well on Steam, but it's in Game Pass, so it's Xbox. Aw, oh, Booty. And there it goes, 97% dropped. Nobody's wiping Pikachu's ass anymore. How many times can you wipe Jigg Jigglypuff's ass and feed him? Like, I don't understand it. But Pal World, yep. As soon as Microsoft started name dropping it in the, in the midst of, like, Minecraft, and you see, like, and Sarah Bond said it on that that sad case of a podcast where she's like, Pal World, you know Pal World. Like, what, a, what an incredible success it's seen on Game Pass. Like, come on, dude. The Steam, where, where's, my, where's my chart? Where's my chart? Damn, I got too many screens up here. Oh, damn. Oh, here it is. Where it is. 97%. Come on now. What are we doing here? Where's my... Where's my where is it? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, it's going to be one of those nights. So, oh, Jesus. Yeah, the group therapy podcast. Exactly. It wouldn't be one of those nights. Here we go. But you shouldn't worry. Don't worry. You know, what I always say as an Italian... Uh, when Tommy tells you don't worry about it, that's when you should worry. All right, that's what that's that that's a tip here for all the grind is coming on in about two hundred here coming on in here. Hit that like button. I gave you a tip of the day. Hit the like for the, a tip of the day. When somebody comes to you and tells you don't worry about it, worry about it. That's some that's that's life advice. <coughs> that's life advice for you. That's right. When somebody says don't worry about it, you worry about it. Don't worry about it, they say. Yeah, because it was like, it skyrocketed on January 19th. And what happened? According to SteamDB, and now this is just Steam because these are the ones that actually sold. This is not no Game Pass engagement. Oh, I touched Jigglypuff's ass. I wiped his ass. Oh, look, engagement numbers. You know, 500 pieces of toilet tissue were used to wipe P Pikachu's ass. And now that, that's engagement. No, this is how many people bought the game. The 24-hour peak now. Went down to 69,000. Jesus. If that said, where the hell is Starfield at? It's as empty as the planets. It's incredible. But now they have 69,000 as of this writing, dude. It was a game in preview. And, and, and that's it. It was a single player game in preview. Busted. Early launch. Did what it did. What it does. And I really think Helldivers 2 came in. And gave the smackdown to a lot of these, uh, you know, a lot of people. I, I really think that Helldivers 2, which is still selling in the top. I really think that Helldivers 2 came in and really took a lot of the momentum away. Because I think if, if Helldivers 2 didn't drop, I think, I think we'll still be talking about feeding Jigglypuff. A bootleg goddamn uh, Pokemon. Nintendo went after them. And all this other stuff. It got a real lucky case. Not saying it's a bad game, but it was... It was blown off again. It was it was a it was blown up, and then all of a sudden they started trying to uh, they started to to try to throw Game Pass in there like that was gonna be something. But I agree, Ghost of New Orleans. Like, yeah, I think Hell Divers did kill off Pal World. I think that took a lot of the attention, and that was an engaging multiplayer game, and it's still dropping more content. They're still doing it. No, I think that I think they cashed out LM exactly. Fifteen million sales. Oh yeah, oh yeah. No, and sales. By the way, see that's the difference. See, LM makes a good point here in the Grindhouse chat. He says fifteen million in sales is tremendous success. I don't think that the devs are worried about that. And see exactly, LM, you make a great point there. That's why sales matter. If this was some sort of Game Pass only thing or a subscription type thing, this kind of peak and drop would be detrimental to a service game. Will be detrimental to a subscription game. But see, when you sell something, they got their money. They got their 15 million. Thank you very much. Sales, not engagement. See, engagement, this is a this is a uh-oh. But because it's sales, that's why sales matter. Because the devs now have the money. 
Oh, yeah, it drops. Okay, well, we'll just add more content with the money that we got. Oh, hey, we cash out and we leave. But that's the that's why sales matter. That's why, like Sean Layden said on 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 a Whoops podcast, Shad J. Bari and Persona, like he said on their show, buy your games. That goes right to the devs. Because, you know, where's those Xbox engagement numbers? And and notice they're not talking about whatever engagement there was on Game Pass. But anyway, just to, just to let you know that Pal World, you know, dropped, but they got their money. But sell, sell, sell. Sell your games. Makes sense, right? But it reached incredible peaks, and, it, and, it, and that's why they kept doing sold. And then they started throwing in Game Pass at the bottom there. Like, but we have this million players and this, and they got a big full roadmap, you know? Games in preview, dude. I'm sure it'll do well. When it comes out, they even mentioned, look, can't deny it, a PS5 version, by the way. Mm, sounds like they want to sell their games, right? Mm -mm -mm. They mentioned a PS5 version could uh, arrive later, but right now it's PC, Xbox, and Game Pass. Mm, sounds like they want to sell their games. Oh, I got a good video for you. You better keep locked here. You got, you got a good video for you. It's incredible. Another thing that's down... And, you know, uh, I don't know what we're saying here, but, you know, again, Booty uh, went over there. He's like, hey, guys, how's uh, how's Call of Duty Mobile, Warzone Mobile doing? Oh, damn, Booty Wood, you touch it. Oh, he touched it. Warzone Mobile's debut earnings are down 67% from Call of Duty Mobile. Warzone may have missed Xbox internal projections, says Derek Strickland. From Dika Geek or Dika Geek Week a Week, whatever the hell it is. Remember that mobile was the main reason Microsoft gave for the seventy b -b 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 billion dollars. Ah, you know Microsoft. Um, oh man, I feel like I feel like we need to break into. You know what? Call of Duty. They're supposed to save Call of Duty. You were the chosen one, Microsoft. You were the chosen one to save Call of Duty. You are the chosen one. But there you go. Thank you, new subscribers. Oh, yeah, by the way, we're on our way to 3,000 subscribers. So subscribe here if you're new. We're at, we're at uh, 2760, so let's try to get those there. Definitely. We're on our way to 3,000. I get some more stuff coming your way when we hit that 3,000. We'll do some camera live streams. Who knows? Oh, baby. But you know what? I We need to break into song. How much? They spend? $80 billion? Ugh. Somebody hit that like button. I need, I need, uh, I need songs. I need something. Grab your control. Uh oh, Groban in the house. It's time <coughs> to oh. compete. Xbox, take your seat. We're always last in the race, and we will always be beat. Gonna spend more cash. How much did they spend? Complete. How much? Yeah. Hey. We need it. To be relevant, we'll go all out, no holding back. Led by Phyllis and Booty, we'll bring the games everywhere. No more sucking, it's time to show we care. We start by bringing Panaman. Hey, See a thieves high fire, rushing grounded games over to PlayStation and Switch. And we will say that exclusives don't matter anymore And then when, when we get Starfield ready for the pitch Big booty Bobby in the loo Walked out with the bag and now left with all these IPs What the hell are we supposed to do? Shout out Thrifty, member for 11 months. He's going into the, he's about to be a golden grinder, Thrifty. Almost to gold. Love the show. Constantly amazing. Never forget the flute. Oh, yeah. We're going to hear some flutes. Oh, my goodness. Shout out Thrifty, man. Getting on that golden thing. Shout out Thrifty. Shout out, check out his show on Wednesday. I think I was we were on there 
but both fighting the Yalogies. Last Wednesday, we were like old men with cigars. Like, <coughs> I'm a little bit bad today, but man, I am under the... Oh, my goodness. It was a crazy weekend. Thank you. You like that tune. That's right. You spent $80 billion. What are we supposed to do with all these IPs? Well, there you go. And I always like that part where Big Booty Bobby and Lulu walked out with the bag. That's right. My lines. Walked out with the bag. There you go. They wanted to buy a... F it was about the mobile strategy. It's about the mobile game. Well, there you go. Let's go look. Let's go tweak. Let's go tweak, tweak. Let's go, we'll go tweak, tweak. Let's see what tweak, tweak has to say. There we go. Let's see. I thought they were supposed to save it. Warzone earned 67,000 less. Call of Duty Mobile could be a big miss. Oh, man. Phil, that mobile, that mobile store. <coughs> oh, shit. I got to hit mute. Oh, my goodness. Warzone launched on March 21st and has generated about 1.4 million in the first four days of the market. New data indicates that's a significant 67% reduction from its predecessor of Call of Duty Mobile, which released to a very different pre-COVID market. You're my number one customer. 4.2 million in its first four days. Warzone Mobile made 2.8 million less than Call of Duty Mobile did in the same period. Oh, man. Bill Ness, what's going on? What did you do? Booty went in there. He's like, uh oh. Booty went in there. He's like, oh, who's the Call of Duty one zone? No, Booty, don't touch it. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Oh, shit. Touched it. That's it. Booty touched it. Booty, keep Trash Finger in your pocket. Don't touch anything. Well, what's this new mobile game with Call of Duty? Oh, Booty. Stop touching everything. <coughs> Put it behind the frosted glass. Booty can't go over there. Damn. Booty touching everything. Zero Steel member for 10 months. He goes, Microsoft just sucks ass on everything. Also, 10 months, baby. Two more months to go. Yo, Zero Steel going for the Golden Grinders. I'm going to have a lot of Golden Grinders coming on in here. Cosmic Hero with the 20. Yo, thank you, man. He goes... Hey, Jez, what's good? I want to inform you and some others that you may not know that Hiroki is only the interim CEO at this moment. Don't want people to be misinformed. You know how Twitter is. Yo, shout out to you, man. Thank you, Cosmic Hero 270. Exactly. Hiroki-ness is only temporary, hopefully. They're looking for somebody. Hopefully they find somebody. But man, oh man. Hiroki Totoki. We got, we got that Totoki-ness on here. But Booty Man, you got to watch. You got to watch it, man. He's like a kid in a candy store. He's like a kid in, he's like a bull in a china shop. Shitting up the place. But anyway, it was for the mobile. The news may not be welcomed by Microsoft, who recently purchased ABK for $70 billion. Oh, man. Grab your oh, oh. <laughs> Groban, calm down, Groban. Calm down, Groban. Mobile gaming was cited as the biggest reason that Microsoft chose to buy Activision at the time. Mobile represented the largest earning platform for ABK that may no longer be the case, but neither customers nor investors will know for sure as Microsoft does not reel per segment earnings data for its games division. Now I wonder why. Activision data shows clear trends skewing towards mobile growth. The company made $3.3 million. Unfortunately, no one will ever know again how much money Activision makes unless Microsoft chooses to adjust. So they're just going to absorb them like the freaking blob. They, you're never going to know how Activision's doing before and after. The, the, Microsoft just sucks them in. That's it. And they throw them in more computing. Throw them in the thing. Well, there's your mobile strategy, Phil. Tell us me again about all the mobile and about mobile gamers and about all the stuff. Right? And their killer games that are like oh, the little, the little Animal Crossing. There's a boo 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 There's a boo 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 right there. There it is. Well, $80 billion, what are you supposed to do, Microsoft? Again, yet again. Booty, yo, big booty Bobby, man. He cashed out. Lulu started up another company. Lulu. She left. They went out with the bag. Lulu was, 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 was liking people, going to their chats, offering dates. Now, I don't know. <laughs> 
But there you go again. Phil Spencer sitting down. Another another interview. We're still learning. Oh, no. We suck again. And there you go. And then they're going to say, oh, well, this was in development before Booty came in there and touched everything. You want to know what? They bought him for mobile. Call of Duty Mobile. And then Apple Store still giving them the, 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 the bootlegness. Oh, my goodness. I tell you. They... Everything, everything, listen, everything that can go wrong has gone wrong. It's not will go wrong, has gone wrong. Because they made these choices desperately. They could have walked away from this deal and just focused on making great games and focused on nurturing Bethesda and Zenimax and getting those games to, to quality and then worked on the studios that they purchased for 18 and 2018 and making sure their games were quality because you're already destroyed ninja theory with releasing bleeding edge and then canceling that thing after less than a year like ninja theory now is like, like go back to what you have already instead they absorb this whole ass company for mobile they say yo you just all they did was add some more debt like, they, they spent so much money, and now they got to try to make it all back. And that's why they're in the position that they are today. It already went wrong. They could have walked away. They overpaid for Activision. Oh, man. They, they did. They did. Even Yabara's talking shit about them. Even Yabara went around talking shit. Red game Ball of the got generation a lot of, a lot of hate it's not a bad game it's you know a double a game at best you i would look at it like at a, a seven maybe <laughs> you know <laughs> i can't <coughs> i can't laugh without going through a coughing fit oh man sorry for grinding this. I'm, I'm powering through this stuff right here oh goodness but yeah <coughs> oh damn Jesus. it went wrong before the that's right Oh, I told that portable last week, dude. But this is like, like what? Like, come on. First off, you know this is the whole thing. Like, Call of Duty was a thing, and now they try to do Warzone Mobile, and no. So Warzone Mobile been in over a week, and that Call of Duty may have hit a wall. Exactly, they did Warzone Mobile, and they shut. Didn't they shut down Call of Duty Mobile? They, they're like trying to migrate people and force them to this new one. What a mess. What a mess. Uh, Phil, tell me more about how it's mobile, Phil. Please, tell me more. Yep. There it is. The flute. There you go, Thrifty. There's your flute. There it is. Where is he? Tell me more, Phil. It's about mobile. Go get him, Phil. Tell him more. Tell him more, Phil. Tell him. Tell him. Give it to him. Give him that flute. Oh, shit. There he goes. Get the bassoon. Come on, Phil. The, the flutes will get bigger and bigger. Oh, man, Phil. Oh, goodness. Oh, Phil. Not that one. Oh, man. Oh, man. Phil, not that flute. Tell me more. There's a flute. It, it, right? That's right. everything they talk. Like, just make games that are great, Phil. Focus on quality. Focus on releases. Deliver what gamers want. Nobody cares. Why are you chasing pipe dreams? If you have nothing to shop around with, I said you're going around with pennies. What are you doing? Now the mobile strategy. Apple said you're not coming to our store. Your Call of Duty now, just not a good launch for it. Your subscriptions are not growing. You can't sell your games. Your games are lack of quality. You dropped off the games that you do have. Face of the earth. I see, you know, people asking where's Starfield DLC. Dude, they just fixed the shadows and lighting. Didn't you see the 100 updates of fixing shadows and the glitch where the guy's head spins around? Like, that, they're still fixing the game. Starfield's still getting fixed. They can't add new content to it. Helldivers 2 is going incredible, adding content left and right. They got vehicles. They got the, the mechs. 
Talk about supporting a game. Microsoft was the originator of DLC and this season pass, all this stuff. They dropped their games off the face of the earth. Grinders, I have a question for you. I was not even going to do a, a poll. Let me ask you a question. I need to know. I need an answer here. I need to know. Speaking about Redfall. And maybe I am incorrect. Maybe I'm incorrect, but I, I need an answer. Wait a second. Wait. Oh, they're selling the upgrade. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. I need an answer right now. Do you remember this? I need an answer, Grinders. <coughs> Here's one. <coughs> Excuse me. Trying not to call in the microphone here. What happened to this? What happened to this little little nugget right here? Redfall Hero Pass. What happened to all those that bought the Bite Back Edition of Redfall? Where, where, where's the heroes? We're talking about Starfield DLC. There was supposed to be some DLC coming out. Did they add new heroes to uh, to Redfall and we missed it? Did, did we miss something there? Oh, shit. Did, did we miss anything? I missed the news? What happened to Redfall Hero Pass? Anybody? Hello? Hello? Did I did I miss the news? Did I miss something? Why did he get quiet in here all of a sudden? What happened? What's going on? Where's the hero? Where's my heroes? Two new heroes. Where, where are they? Did we miss something? Did Phil forget to announce them? I don't know. Did I did I miss the news? They bought they sold this game for a, for a, for how much was this? This was a hundred dollars. This was the hundred dollars. Bite 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 ass edition. Did, did they? Did we miss it? Did I miss the news? Did I miss it? I need mean, no. I, I did. I miss. It. Let me know the chat. Did I? Did I miss the news? We're going into. We're in April right now. Did I miss the news about the two heroes? The trash was one hundred twenty dollars. Lucio said, "Oh shit! How much was that bite back edition? <coughs> bite back edition? How much was? How much was this thing?" Let me see. Oh my, wait a second. Oh, yo. Yo. Holy, where is it? I'm not gonna let me say it. Hold on. Okay. Holy Spirit, activate. Oh no. Holy, Holy Spirit, activate. Spirits. Holy Spirit, activate. Activate. Phil asking a hundred dollars. It's on sale now with Game Pass for eighty. Holy crap! You could upgrade for th the low price of twenty seven dollars. What are you supposed to get? You get Redfall Hero Pass with two future heroes: laser beam, multi weapon skin, a tactical knife, eyes in the dog Jacob outfit. Well, yo, Phil. What happened? Would you chip that? <laughs> Would a, you just it's a pass it's with two characters. No updates. No mention of it. Nothing. Holy crap, Phil. Phil, we, you got some explaining to do, Phil. Th this is what I mean. This is what I mean. You just abandon this stuff. Who is keeping a who's keeping their finger on the pulse here? Who? I got I got screens all over the place here. Holy crap! Helmet, what's going on? Sanders, what's going on? It's Mega Maid. She's gone from suck to blow. What? They're getting all their air back. Do something. Do something. Do something. Do something, Phil. Do something. Holy crap. What happened? To, who is 
checking on this stuff? Hundred dollars. Phil got the money. We ain't found shit. Oh damn, Booty telling me about where the content is. Holy crap, Booty. Not like this. But yeah, like, what's going on? <laughs> Quick sell before it goes to the PlayStation? Oh shit. Oh no. <laughs> But my goodness, an upgrade for the, like, dude, there was a hero pass. They should add a hero. Pro the game came out in May, May 2nd. That they should have had, um, dude, they should have had, uh, they should have had a character come out in December. They should have had a character come out in October when they ended the 60 frames. That's what they should have had. Know what happened? They went in there in October. They went in there in October, and Booty was like, like, okay, let me see. We get this thing out there. Yeah, Booty, don't touch anything. Don't touch anything, Booty. We're getting it out. All right? We're going to ship the 60 frames in October. And then Booty's like, oh, what, is this a new character? Booty, don't know. That's not for you. Oh, shit. Booty touched it again. Touched it again. Booty. Now we can't even release the character. But dude, hundred dollar bite bite your ass edition. Good be the good people of Xbox. Yeah, that is some that's some wild stuff. She came out in May. It's gonna be almost a year now. One more month, a year. It's supposed to be a hero pass with two new characters. The game launched at 30 frames a second in May. They updated the 60 frames in October. In the console, and then remember all the pop-ins and all that other stuff when it launched. It was horrible. And then we're sitting now in April of 2024, almost a year later, and they have no mention of anything with the new heroes. A year, dude. That is criminal, dude. And then you, you look at even you look at even um, look like you even look at uh, Starfield. They're like, oh, Starfield DLC, one of the biggest games of the generation they couldn't even talk about. They talked about so much. At least they have till September. But my goodness, what happened to these character pass? But anyway, just thought I'd throw that out there because, you know, while Xbox is, like, you know, trying to figure out what to, what to do with their games, what I'm trying to say is that they still never fixed shit. Thing again. Now I gotta fix it. Sorry. Is better? Sorry. Now my mic almost stop. Look at this. All right, it's better now. Sorry. <clears throat> but yeah, what I'm saying about it is everybody's trying to figure out what to do with their games. They still never supported the games that they've released already. And this is just adds to the, the frustrations of purchasing these games for Xbox and doing this stuff. Like, this is what, this is the issue. What's up to a man? Like, this is what I mean. Like, you focused on mobile. You focused on the ABK deal. You focus on everything else. We had to play. You heard that Phil interview. You, we went over it on Monday, on the Friday. We went over, like, all the stuff. Oh, you know, consoles ain't it anymore. This ain't it. This is not it. And it's like, but dude, <clears throat> the games that you released, you're not even supporting them. Stop worrying about where you're going to be and worry about what you have now. They're so worried about this future. They're trying to predict it. And they're, they're destroying, they destroyed everything that they had under their roof. It's insane. It is like hubris to the T. What's up, Craig? Two bucks. He says Mass Effect talk. No, no, no Mass Effect talk here, man. Only one about romance. And you know, this is going to be some Hitoki Ness talk. Because Jim Ryan is out. He left. He is retired. He is in the shop. I, I got news. He's in the He's in the home. It's pudding night. He can't wait for Jello and Taco Night. And he's hanging out in the retirement home playing chess. Just going. 
I think PlayStation, what, what did he say? What was his words? Because I don't think Phil's going to have the same words when he walks out. But what, what was You're his words? You're my number one customer. What was good old Jim Ryan's words? This is him. This is how he walked out. He, as the bus came to pick him up to take him to the retirement home, Jim Ryan came out here and he said this. A Jim Ryan podcast, in an interview, he said this. I would say we are at the top of our game now, and PS5 is in the lead. And then, after he said that quote on the PlayStation podcast, he heard the horns. Oh. Was, oh, that's his car. And then Jim Ryan got into his retirement home bus and took him to his place. And he had some 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 vanilla pudding. And he's sitting there, retired now. Can't wait for movie night. And he left. And Jim Gordon Ramsey Ryan has now left. And now we got Hatokiness, who just came in. But with Jim Ryan, we, you know, we said goodbye to him on Friday. We had the grinders here. We'll say goodbye to him one more time here in, um, you know, with Jim Ryan. Farewell, Jim. Enough for me. Let the retirement do the talking, Ryan said. Uh, he's got the fire, but he keeps it low key. It looks like Ramsey, but no time for TV. Silent presence, but a force to be reckoned. Leaving now, there's no need to beckon. Watch out for the phantom on the scene. He's got his cookies and he's handing them out with glee. Jim Ryan's out, but his legacy still shines bright. Even though we'll remember him tonight. On a crystal clear blue horse, under the summer sun. Jim Ryan on Herman's yacht, sailing, having the most fun. Herman Hall's bouncing, his gold chains gleaming bright. With every wave, he's saying his final goodbye. goodbye. Herman Hulse, the captain of style With his gold chains and chest hair Making us smile as he sails away On his final cruise We'll remember him fondly always in our heart Jim Ryan and Herman Together they sail In a world Good full of line. memories that never will fade The last voyage of Herman Hulse Forever in our minds as he sets sail To new adventures leaving us behind He's got a fire But he keeps it low key it looks like Ramsey, but no time for keeping. Silent presence, but a force to be reckoned. Even now, there's no need to beg. You. Watch out for the phantom on the scene. Yeah. He's got his cookies and he's handing them out with glee. Jim Ryan's out, but his legacy still shines bright. Leaving, yeah. but we'll remember him tonight. Jim Ryan bouncing with Herman on his yacht. Herman holds and off his goodbye with his gold chain. In Chester. Enough from me. We're gonna have the games to our talk. Uh. Wow. All right, I'll let you get the tissues. I'll you know, wipe a little tear from your eye. Looks like Ramsey, no time for TV. True Virgil even liked that song. Oh my god, True Virgil, where were you with the Redfall talk? What happened? You should be the first one asking where your two DLC characters are. Farewell, Jim. Enjoy your pudding tonight. That's right, Crooked Vulture. Enjoy your pudding. Jim Gordon Ramsey Ryan. Thank you, Geeks Man Turner. You like that? You like that, Jim Ryan? Those are one of the... Those are the... The members have access to this. The VIP, the Grind Pass tiers of the gr Ultimate Grinders. There's your songs. More in there. These are just ones that I like to apply to the topics as we do them. But that's a little gr Ultimate Grinder preview. If you want to upgrade, you Grind Pass. Get those songs. All the songs here this evening. But there he is. He's gone. He took no, he didn't he took off a Lulu. Oh shit, he took off a Lulu. Nah, he's he's sailing out. He's done. It's poker night. He's going he's there's, there's movie night. That's why Herman Holtz cares about the movies, because Herman Holtz is making the movies for Jim Ryan to see in the retirement home. He's like, you know what? I got to make good eight movies because Jim Ryan will be watching them at the movie night. In the retirement home, when he's eating his jello and his pudding, to make sure he gets great quality movies. And now, in my chest is. That's right. So that's why he's making movies, because Jim Ryan didn't be watching. But you know, Jim Ryan, man, he's been there for over 30 years. It's bingo night. Oh, shit. Josh says it's bingo night. 
did it for 30 years. The dude didn't do much. He was the Graeming Grindhouse's Gordon Ramsay. That's all I saw, man. He was cooking. He was just screaming at everybody. He ran around the studios, and he would just be like, It's not even pink. This raw. And Coop has delivered undercooked salmon. And Coop will be happy that he's gone, screaming in her face all the time. But, you know, he was the Gaming Grindhouse's Jim Gordon Ramsay. And uh, also known as Jim Jarrett. In his younger days, everybody knows about Jim Jarrett. You know, we have a, a dashing young man. We'll, we'll just do a little recap of uh, of um, of his life. Here we go, of of, of Gordon Ramsay. Of, uh, I mean, um, of Herman, uh, what's his name? Jim Ryan. We also call him uh, Jim Jarrett. We also call him. He was a very dashing a dashing uh, young uh, young man. Where where we have that? I have the files here. He only shared them with me. There we go. There he's in the Josh has got him. He, he became a, a wonderful, um, a wonderful um emoji here at the gaming grindhouse. But he he is a dashing. This is when he started at PlayStation. There he was here. This is when. Oh, oh no, we got him right here. I got his original interview. Uh, this is this is what this is what Jim Ryan looked like when he started at PlayStation thirty years ago. There he is, right here. Hold on, I got the I got the files here. They 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 allow PlayStation allowed me to share them out for everybody. So I just want to make sure I get the the right files here. This is he was a very strapping, dashing uh, Jim Ryan. This is when he started over at. This is when he started over at PlayStation 30 years ago. There he is, ladies and gentlemen, Jim Ryan, incredible. That's what 30 years of PlayStation did to him. There he goes. He was, he, there he is. All right, Jim Ryan. That's before he cut his hair. He had very long hair. He was very dashing. All those years of PlayStation. So, we want to celebrate Jim Ryan. For all those years of play. He was a champ. He came in there. This is a, that was his prime. Incredible. Incredible. It's incredible. 30 years of PlayStation. Look where he, he he moved on. Incredible. He was a champ. He had long hair strapping. <laughs> Yo, shout out to In Inter Easter with five gaming grinders. Chad, play beyond. Craig got it. Yo, what's up, Craig? Craig got it. Josh, you get Gamer, JK Gamer. <laughs> there he is. There he is. Welcome to the VIPs, grinders. But, you know, it was about quality games. He came in with quality. Look at him. Look at how he came in there. <laughs> That's right, Games of Eternity. He taught Herman Holtz how to do the quality splits. He came in there looking like this. It was incredible. We got, I got some more uh, early, early, uh, you know, uh, views of uh, him. There it is. My goodness, look at this. Jim Ryan. He was he was no joke when he came on the PlayStation. Look at this. Oh, that's not him. There he is, Jim Ryan. Look at this man. Look at this guy. When he started here at PlayStation, <coughs> I got the Jim Ryan bobblehead. I did get it. 30 years of PlayStation. What an honor. Jim Gordon Ramsay came in here, no shirt. He retired a champion. <laughs> Yo, all I know is this guy came in here. I, and again, I don't know tons of his history. All I know is what I got from the PlayStation archives and finding his his uh his interview photos here on the on the on the side. So this is what this is what his his headshot looked like when he first started at PlayStation. He interviewed 30 years and now. He's in the old he's in the retirement home now with the pudding and the jellos. But you know, just shows you. You could go to an interview with no shirt on and get a job for 30 years. And then he just said the biggest and, and what's I, I wanted to say something. One thing, I don't know too much about Jim Ryan. <laughs> Jim Ryan didn't even wear a shirt. Ryan, he just walked in there. He's like, I know about quality. He's like, he walked in there and he said this line. He goes, but he just said it, and he's like, you know, it's about the games, not even about me wearing a shirt. Incredible, Jim Ryan. 
But let me tell you something. I don't know too much about Jim Ryan. But all I know is when there was a time that we were we here, now you could all agree to this. When we were sitting on the eve of PlayStation 5 and Next Gen, and all we heard was generations don't matter, all your old games will play better, oh, we're not doing anything new, the same dashboard, here it is, it's the same thing. Booty says that we'll be playing cross-gen games. He was like, oh, they're not going to make any new games for the system, all your old games will work better. And we're sitting there going, I'm not excited for this generation. I'm not excited for this generation. Where are the where is the tech? Where is things that are gonna make us go, whoa? And don't you remember? Don't you remember? It was a, it was a rough time. We're sitting there in 2019, 2020. We're playing great games, Last of Us, Goshima is coming out, and Microsoft's talking about their stuff, and everybody's like, oh, your old games will play better. Booty's like Oh, yeah, but, uh, old games. I'm like, we just did this already. What's new for the next generation? What's new? And that's when PlayStation did their showcase. And see, Josh, you remember. And I don't know if all you remember. But it was, a, it was like sitting here just hearing it was very boring. It was not exciting for the next generation. We weren't excited. Because all we kept hearing was Microsoft leading the same narrative that they started with the One X. Oh, Gears and now higher resolution with the cloud and mobile and console. And we were like, what's new? I'm not excited about next gen. And then PlayStation did its showcase. And Jim Ryan gets out there and he just says this. And this is the only thing I really remember him for. Enough from me. We're going to have the games do our talking. And that was it. There was no Phil interviews. There was no explain this to me about the cloud. Oh, we're not going to be using consoles anymore. The dude just came out there and just said, Enough from me. We're going to have the games do our talking. And proceeded to show us games. Dragon, uh, what was it? It was Demon Souls remake, Miles Morales. Just showing us what was coming. The new games that were coming. Little Big Planet, some of Returnal, just showing us what's coming new for the console. New IPs, remasters, remakes, new games. And just show the game. Stop sitting there and talking and talking and talking about cloud and consoles and nobody cares. They're all this stuff. Final Fantasy 16, exactly. That showcase. And he just said, I'm not talking. Enough for me. I'm not talking. We're going to have the games do our talking. The games will do the talking, and they did. And that was it. And they revealed the PlayStation and the PlayStation 5, and then we had something to look forward to. Returnal. Demon Souls. This is, like, it was such a breath of fresh air because all we were hearing was Booty and Phil and Xbox just trying to shove cloud and subscriptions and your library just plays better on another device it's the same thing i'm like oh my god stop we just did this sitting there going stop enough and this guy comes out there and just drops the games and that's all i really remember him for like you know i know he was there for 30 years but the big thing was was what he did at that thing with the playstation 5 and he says, we believe in generations. Now, you could take that as Jim Ryan lying because a year after some of these, these games were made as cross-gen games. But I think a lot of that had to do with the availability of the PS5. And Sony had to do a pivot. But what happened in Sony's pivot, we didn't suffer with lack of quality of games. Yes, he just put the games on PlayStation 4 when it was, I believe, those games were going to be PS5 games, the Gran Turismo's. The God of Wars. Like, I think those are PS5 only games. It wasn't until the availability of the PlayStation 5 that I think they went and made PS4 versions of them because of that huge install base. And the adoption of the PS5 was just too slow because of the availability of it. I think they all messed up with COVID and stuff, with all that crap. But the quality didn't suffer. Like, the um, Horizon 
didn't suffer because of that. God of War didn't suffer because of that. GTA 7 didn't. You know, we still got top-tier quality games for the PS5. Yeah, they put it on PS4. They ported it down. So the generation talk could be a lie, and, and you want to get ahead, roast them for it, get ahead. But as a gamer, the games didn't suffer. That pivot didn't, uh, didn't affect us in a sense. It was a different approach because he believed in generations. But if you listen, that generational belief is still there today, and it's in the DualSense controller and the SSD, and the way that PS5 is made. The PlayStation 5 was a generational change. That controller is something different, something new. And that changes how games play. Then, the way the PlayStation functions, and we're going to go into the next topic with that, but the, the Xbox Series X was an iteration. It was, it was the same UI, the same controller, maybe a little smaller, no new features, no new dash, no new capability, except for a smart resume. But the PlayStation had a whole new dash. They had activity cards. They had a, a whole new controller with all new features in it. And now you're seeing when these games go to PlayStation, they do something different because of that controller. They play differently. They feel differently. They immerse you differently. So there you go. When you look at generations, they would he made that PS5 something different than the PS4. And you can't say the same for what Xbox did. And that's where when I see he says we believe in generations, I think it's not just because of a game is cross play or something like that, cross like you know, between two systems, but actually the system was a differentiator from the previous system. It wasn't an iteration. So in his generations, he could say he was totally he was totally lying or whatever it is. But all I know is that the games did do the talking, and Jim Ryan now has done the walking. Stop! Enough! That's right. You don't like it, but he has done the walking. Enough from me. We're going to have the games do our talking. And there he is. From the PlayStation archives, when he started at PlayStation versus him leaving now. But the guy did it. So that's what he means here to the gaming grindhouse. He just let the games do the talking. And that's what we needed to hear at that time. And we still need to hear it to this day. And I really think that Microsoft needs to take a page out of that. Let the games do the talking. You don't have to sit there and do an interview with Polygon. You don't have to sit there and talk about this future and what you believe. And, oh, I want Epic Store on an Xbox. Like, no. Where the hell is the Redfall DLC? Where's Starfield DLC? What's going on with Hellblade 2? It's coming out in another month. What are we doing? Nothing. Nothing. But you want to know what? I'm tired. I'm tired of talking about this. I really am talking. You know what we need? We need one Final visit from Jim Gordon Ramsay Ryan. So hit that like button, grinders. I got him here special. Right before I intercepted his bus going to the, the retirement home. I said, it's grindhouse night, not pudding night. Grinders, this is Jim Gordon Ramsay Ryan. And for probably my final time, I will be speaking at the Gaming Grindhouse. And something that I want to leave you with here as you look at my retirement photo. <clears throat> it's not.
Stop! Stop! <laughs> bad. Bad. It's not it's working. working. Is it it's not, not working? working. Did it, Did it takes. <clears throat> it's not. <laughs> it's, it's over. over. God. God damn. Jim Gordon oh. Ramsey Ryan. He really is gone, then. He really left us. It's not working anymore. That's it. He abandoned it. My technology is busted. It worked? Wait, you did work? It didn't work? I can't do it anymore now. That's it. That's it. It was working for me. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't my night. It wasn't my night, Grinders. Billy, Billy Vanilli, he died on the call. That's it. He really is gone. He really is gone, everybody. He 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 really is gone. That's it. We don't we don't have him anymore. I think I I think um. Oh wait a second. Uh oh. Hello. Is this on? I think I, I think, um, oh, wait a second. Oh, uh oh. Hello. I'm still learning. Just hit the Game Pass song. Still learning. I don't know what's going on. Jim doesn't want to speak tonight. He got his tongue tied. <clears throat> I know. It's not one of his night. He's gone forever, Grindus. We'll, we'll try to figure out what the hell's happening to Jim Ryan. But um, he doesn't want to talk. But Jim, congratulations. Eat the pudding. I hear it. It's good on a uh, good pizza night on Friday. Enjoy over at the retirement home. And congratulations on walking out with saying... I would like to say that we're at the top of our game now, and PS5 is in the lead. So there you go. Jim Ryan has dropped the bombs. And uh, and also, you know, speaking about having the, something from the archives, I do have um, something else. Yeah, I just know it was, it's, a, it's been a rough night, Grinders. Rough night. A rough night here. But I do have some uh, behind-the-scenes pitches. Yo, what's up, Anonymous boss? How you doing? Uh, another thing that broke, um, I got exclusive photographs behind 
the Frosted Glass at Rare Studios. All right, so hit that like button, grinders. I'm going to share these. I don't know how long I can share them for. I got these from my inside sources, but this is what it looked like behind the Frosted Glass at Rare. All right, and this is at all Xbox Studios now. Apparently, this is what's happening. Here it is. Oh, my gosh. My goodness. Behind the frosted glass. We got them. We got them. Look at this. They're gifting out PS5s behind the frosted glass. Look at them. Dude. Phil bought the whole shebang. He's like, everything. They said, Phil. This is what happened to Phil. They said, Phil. Helmet. What's going on? Do Standard. something, What's Phil. Going on? <laughs> it's Mega Man. <laughs> She's gone from suck to blow. What? They're getting all their air back. Do something. Do something. Do he something. put the full order in. The full order over at Rare. Holy crap. Phil, they told him to do something. Yo, he shipped them all. Yo, is that Link? Who's that frog? Link? Who's, who's, who's I can't even see. My shit's all over the place. I am. Yeah, frog, I'm, I'm here. And Link are here. Holy the frog's crap. in here too. Dude, yeah. what's up, guys? You just saved me. What's up? I'm, I'm, uh, I'm struggling <laughs> here. I'm like, I'm out of it. <laughs> Find my freaking allergies. It's just been a mess. Oh my gosh. Yo, look at this. So, did you see these exclusive behind the scenes photos? See, there's the frosted glass right here. And that's it. They're making sure that they're all fully stocked. So, and before, what did you guys think about uh, Jim Ryan, uh, his retirement, and, and Hitoki Karoki, Hitokiness coming in there? Anything about him? He's going to be like the interim guy. You think he's gonna flip over a lot of tables, that guy? The Hiroki Totoki? I don't know. I don't even know. You don't even know. Yeah, I know. We'll see. We'll see if he if he talks a lot. Well, I think he's definitely yeah. gonna be looking more like he the Hiroki. Said. Um, I don't think he's gonna be a whole. The, Sony execs don't do a lot of talking. They don't. Yeah. When they do interviews, they're very selective with what outlets they do interviews with. I think this guy, even being more Japanese centric, will probably do even less of that. Um, mm. So I don't think you're going to be hearing a lot from this guy. Plus, he's only the interim; he's not the permanent. He's not the guy that's going to be there long term. Yeah. So, yeah, he's just filling in until they find someone else. So, um, yeah, this guy's more of a finance guy, so he's more like going to try to get the ship back on track as far as the spending, the out of control spending and stuff like that. And also these these games that have been in development. He said these dev times are too long. We're spending too, and we're spending too much money. These studios are missing targets to release these games. I think he was also behind shutting down a lot of the service games as well. So, um, you know. Yeah. yeah, they said he's gonna be there probably a year max. That's what. Yeah, Josh, I saw that too. Like you know, while they look for their new, um, while they look for their new uh, person there, on that one, they said that he's gonna be there for about about a year or so. Yeah, but I think he's definitely gonna be looking at the course. Where is this thing? I have his, his uh. Oh man, where'd he go? Huh? Anyway, that's not it. I guess, I guess only time will tell. We'll yeah, we'll right. See. Only time will tell, dude. Yeah. And yeah, and I don't want to hear. We don't need to hear if he's a gamer. He's playing with, you know, playing in party chats. They don't do that stuff over exactly. there. Exactly. They don't do that stuff. They 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 uh they just do their job. And he's gonna make sure that you know their quality outputs there and and making sure the game ship. That's about it. You know whether he does with spending yeah. and how he wants to spend stuff, dude. I really don't care how they do the money. Like I really don't care. All I care about is the output yeah. that I need to buy. That's it. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I was going to say, Judge, you know, like, I think PlayStation itself and, and the people they've had in charge have, when you look at just like uh, 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 Jim Ryan and uh, Hiroki Totoki, like, they're not the the people that came before them. Like, the, the people that came before them, they actually felt like they were more, and I don't know, uh, Jim Ryan, if he's ever been a developer. I don't know if that, that I'm not for sure. Like oh, game developing or anything. I think he's more of a bit. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not saying game, Ryan. Um, well, I think I think that some of these guys that came before were in the development lane. They're they're gamers as well as developers, and I think that's the <laughs> difference. I think you had some of those those people over there. They were in the they had the business, but they were gamers and they were developers. Um, and I just think that I think they're going more of the the business business route. You know, like this. 
It's all yeah. about business. I business, know, and he's their C. He so he's their CFO. Mm. So he was he he uh they promoted their chief. This is when is this? This is in February, right? So this is in uh for Hiroki. Uh, wait, I'm looking at this. I'm looking at this now. February second, two thousand twenty three. So last year, he was their CFO, and he got he moved to president and chief operating officer, COO, mm. and and he moved up last year a year ago in February. Then he came as they upgraded their annual guidance Thursday, forecasting stronger profits for PlayStation gaming business. The management reshuffle took place on April 1st, where Totoki, described as a steady hand by investi- investors, also remained as chief finance and working alongside Sony's president, Yoshida, who will double as chief executive and chair. So this is last year. This is last year. Analysts have okay. considered Totoki as a natural successor to Yoshida, with the duo having worked closely together. So they're saying that he may be take over as president of the entire company. Totoki will be expanding his role and uh when the um you know at a time where their group's profits come from content, games, films, and music, while the original electronics business accounted for about twenty percent of the operating costs in twenty twenty one. The ship focuses mm-hmm. towards a media business that had begun before Yoshida became president. Another of Yoshida's strategic bets have been on electric vehicles, and we saw that. Totoki indicated oh, Thursday on Thursday's earnings conference that he will remain Yoshida's strategic direction while pursuing new drivers and growth. I'm obsessed with growth. When growth stagnates, you fail, you fall into a negative spiral, he said. We have defined. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. I'm supposed to say pause, Jazz. Pause. Oh, yeah, pause. Or, 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 See, or, I told or, you, I'm off today. Whatever they say. I'm oh, off today. Maybe, whatever. I'm obsessed. <laughs> You're right, that. Those were good pause moments right there. I'm obsessed with growth. <laughs> when growth stagnates. <laughs> You fall into a negative spiral with the ladies. Oh, damn. Now it's a pause. Oh, he said with the ladies. He said, <laughs> we have defined our company's purpose, for, purpose with Yoshida's leadership. My job is to make that a concrete project. So, yo, he's he's obsessed with growth. So I don't know. There's another guy that talks about growth all the time that it can't stand. Oh, no, man. He, oh, my gosh. What are dude, we, what he are can't beat Totokiness. Totokiness Spencer. No, this is how he came in last year. So he's obsessed with growth. So we have to see, dude. Pause on him. <laughs> that was that was him from last year when he came in there. So we'll see what he does, man. He he wants to to grow this business. So Jim was also a money guy. Josh says, <laughs> "Yeah." So I don't know, man. Like like Frog said, only time will tell yeah. what if it time is true tell, to Tokiness. Um. But he is obsessed with growth. I mean, <laughs> overall, I'm happy with where place. I'm happy with where place. Well, I'm getting. I'm overall happy. I'm not. I'm not happy with everything they're doing. But um, at the end of the day, we have been getting under Jim Ryan. We've gotten a lot of great games this generation. Um, so I've been very satisfied with the output of games. Not some of the other stuff they're doing, like putting stuff on PC oh. and and maybe kind of keeping the cars. You know where we can't see them quite yet, you know, but I know the games are coming. So, right. Right. I'm not going to complain too much. I'm not going to complain too much. Good hardware, good peripherals, great games. And and that's, I can ask for more than that. Yeah. Well, no, the way it's been going, it's fine. But like, yeah, definitely, you know, talking more about that first party, we'll, we'll do that. But here's his quotes. These are the quotes that we pulled out when he did it in February of this year. So February 14th, when he dropped some quotes here where, um, you know, he gave a little bit of foreshadowing here. He says, Bo-, and he talks about growth again. He goes, um, I'm trying, and this is what he said last year, or last month, I'm trying to demonstrate leadership and <laughs> this trying. This man is obsessive growth. Yeah, he's obsessive growth, dude. That was compensating. To have uh, <laughs> <laughs> meetings as possible with the management team. Also visit studios. Oh, God, he's visiting the studios. Everyone is working really uh, hard to fulfill their responsibility, try to optimize the business. I understand that. But overall growth and sustainable profitability or increasing margins on how that will translate to these goals. I don't think people understand that deeply. I think that is a problem of the organization. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm tr- this is all quotes. I'm trying to understand what is happening in the company, in the industry, and also the perspective of analysts and try to explain in a transparent manner so people can recognize and notice these issues so we can have a harmonized approach going forward. That is very general comment seen as mm-hmm. I became chairperson. There are concrete points, which I will not go into today. So this dude, 
I, I'm, you know, I understand about this stuff, but you know what? You you, you want to grow so bad and you want to go spread your shit? Well, you're going to fuck around and find out <laughs> if you want to start doing that stuff. You know, don't let that Phil Ness catch you in the ass because you're going to, yeah. you know what? So that's the thing. Like, I'm not defending their ass. If this guy wants to go do a follow up, follow up Mr. Tweedledum over there with it, with it, what he did to Xbox. Oh, Let's see, Hitoki. Yeah. Don't, don't. You're going to mess. You're going to find not. out the hard way. Phil, you feel, look at Phil Ness and his goddamn future. That, that will be, yeah. that's going to be your that's, future. That would be the worst thing they could ever do. Is follow that model, and I don't think they need to follow that model. No way, no at all. Or the, see that the one issue that I think may be a problem is that they feel like they can do this without harming anything. Like they become so overconfident, they're like, "Hey, we could nobody who's not going to buy a PlayStation? Let's just put this everywhere." And 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 I don't think that's a risk they should take. But well, no. I don't know, man. I mean. It, he did like, say the know, console I, is always core, cool, Josh. Well, he should. I mean, I'm cool with the service games going day and date to PC, um, you know, because I don't really give a shit about service games like that. I don't right. care. Um, the single player games, <sighs> releasing them. I mean, it, it's it's. I don't like them putting stuff on PC, but I guess as long as it's not day and date where we're getting lesser experiences that aren't utilizing the hardware. The yeah, they got to keep quality. This, I think with Herman there, make sure mm -hmm. the quality's there. Because keep the priority, the, con the priority needs to be the console. And as long yes, as the priority continues to be the console, giving us the best experiences and letting the PC guys wait and get the games that, you know, that's... It's not. I don't like it, but it, it's it's a better alternative than what Xbox did, which was just go all in yeah. with PC. Well, the, the no. thing is that I've always no. thought is That's like you know their option. their their issue. Well, the, the the thing is is Microsoft try like they have a financial addition if they try to sell a PC because it's Windows and you know mm -hmm. Microsoft is Windows. Sony doesn't have like Sony VIOs anymore. They don't have any kind of computer presence. Right. So like them just put it, and mm -hmm. Phil called it in that interview like a window like they look at it as like we're gonna put it over there to try to use it as a recruitment strategy or as a way to kind of just meet some gamers that may never buy a PlayStation or maybe they'll consider buying a PlayStation if they play Horizon and see what we can do on console and they could we could you could mm -hmm. play that kind of game on console and you could play the sequels and you could play other games and kind of show them the quality of what we make the quality of our studios the quality of our games. And maybe that might raise some eyebrows of some PC gamers that may say, oh, you know what? I don't want to wait for the next one. I want to get it. So I think they're trying to use it as like a, a kind of a recruitment strategy rather than trying to sell PCs or or sell you something else besides the game. And that's where I think mm. Phil was trying to, they were trying to sell you all different ways of like Game Pass, their store, Windows machines, then Steam, and then, you know, all this, all these, the cloud on top of that. So Phil was trying to fully load that stuff because that's where their finances will, will focus on because that that they have a financial investment in PC where or a financial gain in PC. For Sony does not. Right, not at all. Yeah, they don't they don't make anything on the, if they had VIOs, I would say, Oh yeah, maybe they might push PC a little harder. I'm like, you know, but they don't even have that. So you know, I don't know. I, I we'll we'll see. Only time will tell if we see pivots. You know, I think one of the major strategies here was that they focused on quality and not just a mm -hmm. slew of service games getting thrown out there in a year and a half. And look, um, and look, Jez, when, and I think when they publish, when good. they publish something, when they publish a game, when they put their their name on it, they want it to be quality. I'm yeah, not saying every game that, that they put, every game they publish or every game that they partner with is good, but for the most part, you can expect it to at least be a decent experience. Mm -hmm. um, you know, occasionally they have a dud, but for the most part, you can expect if they they put something out, it's with someone, it's gonna be a good video game that you can play and enjoy. So, yeah. um, you can't say that about the green team; they no. don't care about the quality of the game green. at all. No, not at all. <laughs> they don't it's care. It's tough being green over there. But yeah, mm -hmm. like that's the thing; it's the quality of the output of the product, and that's where we should care about the most. Like you know, they will charge us and see how much it is and. And if it's quality, then that's where it is. And if that's what they're going to keep, and they're not going to spam this out there. And I think them focusing on higher quality service games was better than the unrealistic thing of just throwing 
12 games out there and, and seeing, you know, a year and a half to see what happens. I think that was just a, a complete disaster, like, to do that. That would just, just destroy people's time. So we'll see what he does. Mm-hmm. You know, he's a he's a money guy. You know, he's definitely it wants to increase and grow and all this other stuff. So we'll see where he goes with stuff. I, I First off, he's only there for a year. He seems like he wants to take Yoshida's job as, like, the head of everything. So he may find somebody that may kind of feel, you know, similar to him in the size of growing and things like that. And, you know, that's we'll see how he goes with that one. But uh, definitely, I, I would uh, be very interested to see who comes in next, whether it's somebody that, you know, is knows more about games or things like that or if it's more of a, a finance guy. But they said Jim was one, you know. So uh, game night, one, two, three with the five. He goes, when Totoki was talking about the studios. He was actually talking about Bungie. Great devs, bad business. Like, yeah. And, you know, that Bungie thing, like... I, no, I he know. wasn't just talking about Bungie. He did single them out, but he was not just talking about them. I think he was talking about them all game night. I think He was, he was talking, talking about, about some of the stuff. Yeah, he was talking about the the, the, the budgets, the, the, the unnecessary spending, the budget, pe- mm-hmm. studios continuing to miss targets on releasing games. Because remember last year they said that um was it last I don't know if it's beginning of last year or twenty twenty three that they delayed a lot of their first party games. So yeah. these right. studios, their output, the first party Sony owned studios, their output has slowed down quite a bit. Oh, they're yes. partnering up and but now there's not been a shortage of video games because they partnered with Square Enix and uh Koei Tecmo and uh shift up and put in studios like that to get exclusive games but from their actual first party they haven't been putting out games at a good cadence Mm-mm. right no. and i think part of, i think part of it was this focus a lot of the studios had multiple teams and one of their teams in almost all of the studios that they own was making some kind of live service game i think that did i think that that did slow the output of the single player games a little bit because these a lot of these service games had already supposed to have been released already. Yeah, and it was a very so surprising. Most of them, like, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. like and you're right because you know it was very surprising too. It's like when we heard about you know when you see that that uh, Spider Man one, you hear about you know the um what is it uh the company that makes um the the Days Gone. You know them. They're working on right. the next game, maybe a service game. Uh, Sony Bend. Sony Bend. And then you hear right. that, you know, you heard, you know, so with Naughty, with, um, you know, Naughty Dog was working on factions. So you're right. Like, although their big studios were kind of had maybe a service game in the pipeline or working on one, and maybe that did slow their reveal for their next game. And I, I think you're my number one I think customer. A lot of the things is, is that they really haven't, they saw what, and that's what happened with Naughty Dog, where they were like, we're doing multiple projects. And it took them a year to figure out that they can't do all that stuff at one time. And, you know, so I, I don't know. Well, I think it is the spending. I think it is definitely, you know, we got to rein some things in. But um, I really think that the focus on quality there, and that's that's why you have to have Herman Holtz in there, you know, really pushing these things. And I'm sure there's pressure on Herman now about this, about making sure that they're spending right, they're doing this, they're doing that, and to get these games out too. Because, you know, you're not going to grow without content. There's Phil. You know, you're not going to go anywhere if you don't have anything to sell. So if they're going right. to hold on to these games and just wait and wait and wait and build and build and build and spend and spend and spend without You're my number product, one customer. Dude's going to be like, oh, uh, yo, we got to sell. We got to put something out there and stop, you know, spending all this money on here and not having a product out there to sell. Hopefully they're not rushed. Hopefully they're still quality. And those are the things that we're going to have to keep an eye on. So, you know, with any think, kind of I executive think change, right? I was going to say, I think that's the biggest concern is just because I, I don't. London, yeah. I, I I just don't want the, the product to be rushed because you're just trying to push it out. Because, you know, if a rush game comes out and it's bad, it's bad forever, you know? Oh, yeah. Uh, so I'll, I'll, take, I'll take the, you know, the games that take a while to come out versus the game that's rushed. And it's, oh, we got it out next amount of years. I mean, uh, I, I don't want that. I really don't want, want rush games. No, we can't we, have rush We games. can see from other companies that rushing a game does not help. Mm-hmm. at all yep and the game night at comes all. in with the five thank you game night he goes that's true it was revealed that insomniac spent 40 million on cutscenes alone oof Jeez. Wow. Jeez. Jeez Louise. and then true now, virgil, something... oh true virgil says oh, go ahead, uh, go ahead, go ahead. You know, true virgil has some insight here he goes to toki has the mind of phil he's just not as cute oh shit oh no that's not good <laughs> 
So I was I was gonna say um, I didn't see it on the um, panel, but uh, I don't know if you were gonna talk about uh, <laughs> dude. That Stella came, Blade. I'm sorry, yo, yeah. Oh, I didn't I didn't try the demo yet. I downloaded it. Oh, it's okay, okay. I did not yeah, play the I, I demo beat yet. It. Yeah, you beat the demo. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, uh, I beat it. I'm, I don't know if Lincoln, you played it. That's how I was. I, I thought you were gonna talk about that. No, I didn't. I didn't play it. I, I was so busy. Wait, this Stellar Blade. Stellar Blade. It. What game are you talking about? Stellar Blade. Oh yeah, I played it. Lee, no, you Mary, yeah, you can you? leave PC Hawk alone. Wow. That's real PC X Hawk. I beat it. He I says, beat ponies it. Ponies don't have games. <laughs> Let them be. You that's the what? real PC X Hawk. That's hilarious. I beat it, said, and I beat the. They beat the extra little boss for rest mode. I beat the boss like seven hey, times. Let them live. That was pretty cool game, man. <laughs> pretty. Oh yeah, pretty I, cool I'm game. Gonna no, play no, right let me tell you something. I'm gonna play it. Um, it is uh definitely one of the best combat. The combat's amazing. Like I love the game. Yes, yes. I know some people. Amazing. Some people. I, you know, I've had conversations. Some people complaining about the combat because it's a little slower, and it's. Perry heavy. It's not a hack and slash. It's not Devil May Cry. No. You cannot mat. You cannot button mash square. You will get destroyed in about five seconds. Yep. Um, sure will. So it's definitely a very strategic. It's got souls like elements. It's got a mixture of Sekiro, a little mixture of souls, some of that. But it's mm-hmm. not a souls game. Uh, it does have no, difficulty it's not that. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's um. It's great. I, I, I'll say uh, I, I've enjoyed. The graphics are great. The the animations are good. Uh, it performs well. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I have no complaints. I yeah, think it's, from Friday, uh, it's, I haven't I haven't yeah. had a chance. I've been busy and then fighting the the cold and stuff. I have it downloaded. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go pl- definitely play mm-hmm. it. Some people have been some people have been struggling with the demo because. Um, it is like I said. It's not a hack and slash. You have to learn nope. the mechanics, the dodging. The mechanics, the, right. That's good. You, and you can't. And you can't. And you can't just dodge. You got to learn how to parry. Yep. Um, you got to learn um, a lot of the mechanics of the game. Um, and it does have difficulty settings, and you can put it on story mode if you want a much easier experience for those people that like that that don't want a challenge. Um, but uh, I, I, I love it. I, I nice. cannot wait to get this game. So, yeah. well, speaking of quality. Shout out to Zuby Tech. So the the new um there were some documents that were shared that Tom Henderson, Mr. Henderson got Uh-oh. it. Um about the PS5 Pro information. So shout out to Zuby for summing it up. Uh, Zuby now covers Xbox news, he said too. Um uh that's what he said is uh moving forward. Uh and he said uh same same label as a PS4 Pro. So you can have the PS5 Pro enhanced. You'll have the PS5 Pro enhanced features are PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution to upscale to 4K, a constant 60 frames per second, add or increase in ray tracing effects, increased target resolution for titles that run at fixed resolutions on standard consoles, increased target maximum resolution for titles that run at variable resolution on the standard console, increased target frame rate for titles that target a fixed frame rate on a standard console, and inclusion of the PS5 Pro ray tracing effects. Mm, okay. My goodness, my goodness. I got what I got to talk about. I can't wait to say, oh my goodness. Get ready. So this is my thoughts on it. I'm here to tell you right now, we don't care. Nah. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> no, no. Nothing against Zuby. Yo, all this stuff sounds exciting, but this sounds like it's in there. We need to see what the developers use for this stuff. So, yo, while this sounds great on paper, but uh, Mm -hmm. we need to see what this is going to do with the games that they're going to do and, and, you know, how long is it going to take for patches and things like that. So I can't wait to see it in action. But I think the major thing that came out of here is that, you know, that super spectral resolution, you know, everybody was, I saw, you know, Digital Foundry, they're trying to play the game. They're trying to, to find their way, you know, they got to play with the magnets before with the Xbox and got to build it and play and, and, you know, have breakfast and stuff like that. Sony kind of keeps them in the dark, but you know, they're trying to figure out, Oh, well, the GTA is never going to run at 60 frames on consoles. And they're trying to kind of squash it because they're trying to compare it to what's available on PC and going like, well, if this is alluded to, this is similar to this and this is that. And th- 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 it's not going to do it. I say, hold your phone. Because we don't know what's going to happen 
And we've seen the magic true, of true, true. Mark Cerny and what this guy has done with the PS5 and what he did with the PS4 Pro and how we've seen the Pro actually perform better than the One X. So just raw power mm-hmm. ain't the answer. So we need to see how this exactly. comes together. This sounds very interesting. I think, you know, they're <clears throat> upscaling. They're, they're, you know, I think with the tech that they have in here, it sounds mm-hmm. like it definitely will make games play more consistent and better. I think, you know, my thing yep. is that as a standard, we may have our qualities turn into performance modes and our performance modes turn into mm-hmm. high performance modes in most mm-hmm. games. But in most games, yeah, not all also, of them. Right. Because I don't right. want, well, you, well, you know we're going to hear 30 frames, right? We're going to yep, see a 30 you know, frame uh, four years, three years from now. I want to see, you know. I, I want to say that, uh, I want to say it was on this show is where, you know, when the first, when the rumors first started about the PS5 Pro, uh, a while ago that I, I speculated I didn't have any information but I said this console will be launching with some kind of proprietary upscale technology mm-hmm. they're not going to continue they're not going to continue to rely on FSR because it's terrible so right. um, I didn't know that but I was like Mark Cerny they introduced the PS4 Pro with checkerboarding which is an upscale technology I said I'm sure they're not just going to continue to rely on AMD solution and that they would come out with their own solution and so they don't have to brute force everything right it's not just put all the t-flops in there exactly you know what i'm saying so they the thing about it is with sony they tend to find solutions for issues that developers are having with the console sometimes they solve that the next generation you know they solved it a lot of the issues with the new console with uh, uh uh load times game design with ssd giving you a much faster CPU, right? So these games can run at higher frame rates, giving you a, 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 a fast GPU that didn't necessarily have all the T-flops. But guess what? In most games, the PS5 outperforms the console with more power. So I think that I, I trust Sony that this console is going to do what they say it's going to do. I know their first party is going to use it. And oh, I yeah. think most of the third part, the third, it, this is going to help third this console is actually going to help the third party developers the most because they are the ones that seem to be struggling getting their games at decent resolutions with decent image quality that with good frames. So Sony first party studios have been putting out games with multiple modes that run very well. So I think this is going to definitely give something, give some more tools to these third party developers to get their games up to, you know, maybe 14, 40 P up scale with 60 frame per second or something like that. Uh, I don't care about targeting 4K. If you can give me good image quality with an upscale 1440p with a 60 frame per second, yeah. that's great. Well, so, Link, if you remember, that was the whole... Like, it, it, we're doing this again. Like, if you look at the history, it'll tell you your future, right? Mm-hmm. You look exactly mm-hmm. what they did with the with the 4K checkerboarding and how it, Cerny said in that thing, like, just by doing brute force... 4K is not necessary. First of all, that changes the form, the the size of the machine. It changes the the power, and just by brute forcing 4K is not the best thing. And you see, with the checkerboarding, they were able to still maintain performance and give you that that kind of 4K ish look. And I remember the whole thing about checkerboarded 4K versus native 4K, where Xbox was just trying to brute force 4K, and that you're right. I don't want. A, we don't need brute force 4K. If it does, if it look, if it's if it's upscaled to look sharp and it doesn't look blurry, that's like that's fine for me. Like I really don't need to know that it has to be 4K to to be happy with it. Like you know, as long as it has the performance and doesn't look blurry, that's all I care about. Like I don't want blurry textures and stuff. Like if you look at how you go down to, uh, you know, you don't. I don't care about how they got there. Like same thing with checkerboard. Like you played Spider Man the first one with the checkerboard and and it looked mm-hmm. it looked great. You know, it looked great mm-hmm. and. And look what they were able to do with Spider-Man with the ray tracing. Like, those are the kind of things mm-hmm. that, you know, they were talking a lot about ray tracing. And it's still, to this day, Microsoft has really not demonstrated ray tracing in any of their first-party games. And you no. look at what Sony did on day one with Miles Morales, mm-hmm. did performance ray tracing, and actually had ray... And, and 60 frames Ratchet, per second. And Ratchet and Clank looked absolutely incredible yeah. ray tracing yeah. on that one. You That's, know, like, the um, best use of it. You know, Xbox yeah, just imagine... It. Yeah, just imagine giving a console with this kind of power and capability to Insomniac. I know. They, the what they're doing with the PS5 already, uh, upscale 1440p, unlocked frames, over 60 frames per second, ray tracing in every mode in Spider-Man. The game runs 
phenomenally. It loads fast. It's almost instant. I mean, just giving them the console like this, they're going to go bananas with it. Exactly. So, and that's the same thing. Same thing with Corey Ball. Look what Corey Ball pulled out with the God of War at the mm -hmm. end of that PS4. Yeah. And Last yeah, of Us. I'm surprised they got there. Yeah. And Last of Us. Exactly. Those games oh, open. Naughty Dog's going to oh, And go to Shima man, with Dog. the loading times. On last gen. On so last like, gen, yeah. Yeah. They're getting, listen, I'm just saying, so, the, yeah, the Sony first party devs, they're going to excel gonna with this console. They're going to with this stuff. That's but what, I, think yeah. some of these, I think some of these third party games that are really struggling, it's going to help them get over the hump as well. So um, I'm super excited about what this console is going to be able to do. You know, you already got digital, you know, websites like Digital Foundry. They're comparing the PS5 version directly to the PC version of a lot of these games. It's not the same. You, so yeah, it, it, it's, it's it, what I'm saying is like you're gonna get you're gonna get but they're comparing it to a PC with a 4090 and all this crap. Yeah. But I don't need I don't need 4K 60. I just need games with good image quality, high frame rates, bells and whistles. Give me that and be a happy game. And, that, and that's so, the main thing. Like if you could put turn on more bells and whistles visually and give the performance. And you can, and if you have to compromise with a scalable resolution or something like that, not a scalable frame rate, but a consistent frame rate and scalable resolutions to to kind of do that, mm -hmm. and not like as egregious as like a Final Fantasy 16, where like in fights the resolution plummets and you can see the difference in the artifacting and things like that. But <clears throat> whereas you don't have that kind of drop in resolution where it's apparent, but if the system is learning and do if it it could do that and keep the the visual high while Keep a performance there and, and scaling the visuals. I'll be fine mm -hmm. with it. Like, yeah, and that's the thing. Like, I'm excited about what their first party would do with this because seeing what their first party has done already with the tech that they have in hand. And that's why I'm very right. eager to see what they're working on. What does it look like? And then, you know, what happens? The third party then follows in suit with that stuff. So, you know, I'm really excited about that. And, you know, I see a lot of people talking about the cost of it. You know, I, I, we could do a little thing here. Who think cares, it. man? It is. If it's out of your price range, you get you a PS5. I'm going to yeah. tell you something. You don't, it, okay. Like, and I'm just saying, if it's not in your price range, you don't have to. Yeah. This is the issue. People now think they have to be, you know, well, yeah. they want to be part of the conversation. So they feel like they got to have it day one. If you can't afford it, wait it out, trade in your current console, whatever. You're still going to have a good experience on the PS5 if you don't get it. So. Yeah. I mean, it's it's okay. And, and look, it's just like what the pro did. Like, this is a pro. This is not to meant to sell the next fifty million PlayStations. This is going to be part of the next fifty million PlayStations. And the thing is, is like this is this is maybe a ten percent of what their total install base, twenty percent of their total install base. Like that's what it's going to be. But like I said before, by having this out there, it that and and if and look at what they did with the PS5 and the cross gen games, Horizon on the PS4 Pro, and you look at what they did with these cross-gens, you know the games, by looking incredible on the PS5 Pro, are going to still look incredible on the PS5. So this makes the PS5 even more appealing for those that don't want to spend the extra amount of money. Like I said, you could show them the best, that's six dollars $700, and then somebody like, yeah, I don't want that. What is the best one? Oh, yeah, it's $400, and it plays similar. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles of, you know, all that extra fidelity and stuff later on. And maybe they don't care about that stuff. That's why... This this just enhances their base PlayStations, and they're smart by going with the PS5 as the base. You're my number one Whereas customer. Whereas Microsoft has an issue that if they ever try to make a more powerful console, now they have a whole variety, and they got that S still as the anchor or booster hanging in there to say, well, now you got booster, you got the X, and then you got a more powerful console. That booster coming in, mm -hmm. they got to drop it. And the problem is, is that they made that their base reference, and. I think you're seeing a lot of the issues when you're seeing games skip or games like waiting, even updates. You know, that Dragon's Dogma update I, I have on the list, but like Dragon's Dogma 2 did, dropped an update on Friday for PC and PlayStation. And it's like, it's going to be a few more days for the Xbox version. It's like, what the hell's going on? Like, it's crazy how it is so. Uh, is it that difficult? Like, did, did Mark Cerny really listen to like the developers and made this game an easier thing to develop for? Because how the hell does. Xbox just suck again, you know. Just they don't get it on day. Like how they just say, "Oh, we delayed the game." You know, uh, what was it? Uh, Baldur's Gate can't get it to run, dude. It's got to be that X. I think it's the S. I think that S 
really is a curveball to a lot of these devs when they got to make something for Xbox. And, and you know, Microsoft's not very developer friendly with that freaking thing out there. The developers never liked it from day one. They could con- they could talk no, about how much they want this the console and stuff, but they didn't want it from day one. Let me get they Mr. Did, Grimm with the five. Did. He goes, I can tell the difference between 30 frames and 60 frames, but I can't tell the difference between dynamic upscale 4K and native 4K. And Mr. Grimm, you know, you're right because, you know, one of the things is that, you know, with the dynamic 4K and native 4K, I think like a lot of times was if it was like spinning around, you may see a little drop in resolution. But again, it is so hard. To it, see. It's it, it, really it, hard no, to it depends on what it really depends on what the uh, the floor is on the lowest resolution number. You're right. That's, that's you're scaling true. from. Yeah. If you're scaling from 720p, yeah. that's <laughs> you're going to notice. But that's, I noticed when Digital Foundry always probably, yeah. did that, they would like look at a moving something moving and see if there's a resolution drop. But again, yeah, I agree. I'd rather have steady frames and have a, a scalable mm-hmm. resolution than a, a yep. uncapped resolution and, and a locked, uh, uh, no, I mean a capped resolution and unlocked frame rate. That, no, we don't want that. That's like Dragon's Dawn went on there. But, um, but yeah, I'm excited for it. You know, I, I think one of the things that they will kind of say is like for demanding games like GTA six, which again, everybody's talking about GTA six, but nobody has seen it. Um, tech experts and digital foundry, Rich Ledbetter said that we shouldn't expect 60 frames on the PS5 Pro, which I think was, he should hold his tongue. I don't think he should say anything. Listen, yet. man. Those guys are wrong about the Xbox. It, it, they, they could be, they could be right, but I'll just say this. Uh, they were dumbfounded almost this whole ge- current <laughs> exactly. generation. Why the PS5 mm-hmm. was oh, outperforming. Got, yep. The Series X, and they finally had to admit maybe they shouldn't have relied on the exactly. T-flop, so. They're dumbfounded at uh, how Xbox and I got the it's a bug, it's a bug, it's a bug, <laughs> it's always a bug. How's this happening? And he goes, Let's bet his analysis was only based on the pro CPU, which will be identical mm-hmm. to the standard system with a 10% gigahertz. But again, and that's the CPU, yes, CPU physics and all that other stuff, but we don't know, mm-hmm. you know. I would, I would just. You know, I wouldn't bet I see, anything hey, what, on anything right what now. Mark, sir, what did Mark say? A system is not one component. Exactly. You can't just look I, at the I CPU. And speaking about Digital Foundry, here is their video of how dumbfounded they are about where is this stuff. Look, and this is the other thing. Here's this. Uh-oh. Xbox games are running better on PlayStation. How is this true, Booty? Okay, how do you let this happen? But- Let's play the clip of our great the latest release, Hi-Fi Rush. My goodness. Regardless, the current result is PS5 gets away with a higher setting than all other releases. Though Wait, quite wide, this go. current result is PS5 gets away with a higher setting than all other releases. Though quite why this is the case is a mystery. But it's the mystery. point is, we're seeing too many inexplicable issues like this, and it's not just limited to Hi-Fi Rush. It's affecting a range of games on Xbox. It began with Ghostwire Tokyo, which released on Xbox a year after its prior timed exclusivity with PlayStation 5. At this point, developer Tango Gameworks was an Xbox first-party studio, and yet, despite the extra year to work on an Xbox Series X release, arriving in April 2023, the game was tangibly worse than the existing PlayStation 5 version released in 2022. Even to this day, running brand new tests on the performance modes on each, using their 120Hz outputs, PS5 still has a visible frame rate lead. The difference is by as much as 10 frames per second and will be entirely hidden if running on a 60Hz display, obviously. But it was the case then and still is the case. Equally, we still see other key advantages on PS5 today that aren't addressed. The quality mode's ray tracing features, the RT reflections, still run at at a high quality level on PS5. Look at these ray trace reflections. Like, look at this stuff. This is in their own game that had a year delay because Sony had the year exclusive and they own them. Microsoft bought them for $7 billion. Here we go again. He He spent all this money. A little ray tracing a year later. Are these the tools? Is this is this a, a like what is going on? Their own game, own game. Hi Fi Rush, their own game. Look at this stuff. Look, and they're the ones that talk about ray tracing, the uncompromised pixels. Uncompromised my ass. 
on PS5. Other, more easily it's avoidable pentiment. issues have pentiment. also emerged. God Here's damn. Pentiment Look running this. on its PS5 launch build in February 2024. It released with a unique 120Hz mode on Sony's platform, which was not present on Xbox Series X at the time. A wide range of games where the smaller GPU and slower CPU on PS5 somehow routinely offers up palpable advantages over Series X. Mm, a big case in point is this test, where we got Cyberpunk 2077's internal PC benchmarks running on both console versions, where PS5 shows an advantage. Yes. It's also crucial that Microsoft maintains a reputation that Xbox is the best place to play its own games, especially so as it seems clear that more games will transition to PlayStation in due course. We suck again! How? How? I was gonna say, how the hell is this happening? This is insane. Ghostwire is crazy. And they never fixed it. Like you said, like, you know, they're going back to Ghostwire Tokyo. They never fixed this. They never addressed this stuff. He said he went back into the game. And today, they've never updated it. They never fixed it. They never did anything with it. It is the same thing. So this is not from... His video. This he said that he says in this video that they went back there to even today. Where does he say it? Where, where does he say it right here? Let me make sure this is not like oh that was launch trouble. after its prior times exclusivity with PlayStation Five. At this point, developer Tango GameWorks was an Xbox first party studio. And yet, despite the extra year to work on an Xbox Series X release, arriving in April 2023, the game was tangibly worse than the existing PlayStation 5 version released in 2022. Even to this day, running brand new tests on the performance modes on each, using their 120Hz outputs. Even today, so a year later, after two years after the PlayStation release, a year after their Xbox release, a year later, these are the results. Going back into the tech analysis, the same thing. First off, the frame rate in high performance mode, it is like it is like almost 10 frames. It's not no one frame. Then you look at the horrible ray tracing that they got in here. The most powerful Xbox. And then you look at their own games in Pentiment, Hi-Fi Rush. Like you look at this one. Look at this is insane. Like you don't have to be. No zoom in three hundred percent. Like there are extra shadows here than than at all. Like it's the better version, the frosted glass. Like look at this, it is insane. Even the Steam version, the PlayStation has better shadows. Like this is is, is crazy. You want to talk about Moore's law? You want to talk about the a rate of limiting returns? All oh, the tech is is just growing. The games that you know it, it's it's these are the little things that you have to look at now. And better resolution, better shadow resolution. These are the things that you turn on and turn off. And it is just inexplicable how their first party is not demonstrating quality in their own games. That is insane when they bring it over. This PlayStation version came out a year before the one on the right. A frosted glass, dude. A frosted glass. No, it is insane. I I don't I don't get it. This is what happens. Like I don't their own studios. But you know. Uh oh, what's this? Creativity, sneak peek, recreation. Frost of Glass Room, one of the grinding gaming grindhouse hits for Ultimate Grinders. Uh, they've been jamming to that, but uh, there's a little sneak peek of the Frost of Glass Room on Grindhouse Records with Grinds Pass. On that one, they were jamming to that song. But man, that Frost of Glass Room, man. 
I don't get it. Is the PlayStation 5 and Cerny Energy, is that shit true? Is that guy a magician? How? This really does make the Xbox console show that they do not know how to make hardware. They do not listen. They're not listening to the devs. They're not making it easy for them to develop for their software, their hardware. And what's crazy is that their own developers are not taking advantage of the system itself. It's crazy. Matty B says, just play the, just buy a PS5 song, right? It's an, it, it's inexplicable. Digital foundry, bugs. You can only say glitches and bugs and stuff all you want. But look at this. How does this make sense? How does, how do you talk about quality and Xbox being important. And Think about consoles, <clears throat> it's your highest value gamer. It's your person who plays the most, they buy the most. But the thing that's also important is that customer is actually your most valuable customer across every device. Well, you don't treat him like a valuable customer, Phil. Gaming. You don't treat him like one. But I don't understand how when you, know, when you think about Xbox, you're supposed to think about quality games. Is their hardware just not... I don't know. Like they suck again. I, I don't get it. Yet this guy... Phil Spencer! Phil Spencer! Phil Spencer! Phil oh, man. Spencer, Let's go! Yes! Yes! I see commentary that if you just build great games, everything would turn around. Phil, you don't have to build any great games. Just fix the ones that you got. It is insane. It is, uh, it is really... Head scratching. Did they fix this bug yet in Pentiment? Uh, Frogs, Link, did, did do any any update on the bug in Pentiment? I gotta look this up now. Live, I'm looking up. Did they fix 120 frames on Xbox with Pentiment? I am looking this up now. Because I heard it was a bug. Did they fix it? They have fixed it at the end of March. Patch 1.3 bumps it up. They waited until people called it out, dude. They have fixed it. It was disabled due to a bug. It's being disabled. It's just... it Being disabled is just a bug. Game was out for over a year and a half. They fixed it. They fixed it February. It took them a month to fix it. The game was out for over a year and a half. Yeah, they fixed it. But I don't think they would have fixed it. <laughs> I, I don't understand it. A bug. Uh, over a year bug. Game came out in 2023. Actually, in 2022. The game came out in the year that there were no Xbox games. That 2022 that Phil said was a horrible year for them. So all the focus should have been on Pentiment and squashing those bugs, don't you think? It wasn't like they had a bunch of games. Man, No Man's Sky update skipped Xbox for like a week. I don't understand this stuff, guys. I don't understand how this is coming. And then we got Digital Foundry sitting here with more interesting stuff. They're explaining now why indie developers might bypass the Xbox. EGC is reporting that some third-party publishers are considering dropping Xbox now he's support gonna say why due to, they're quote, unquote, it. flatlining performance in Europe with claims that producing a Series S What's and X version of a game isn't worth the effort. Phil, what do you make of this? Is Series S really that much of a pain cloud. to develop for? With development costs increasing, they, you would think publishers would want to release on more At platforms, point, they should drop not fewer. Yeah, uh, Oliver, thoughts on it, this one? Yeah, I think the size of the market is just smaller and it's not helpful that it's more complicated to develop for. And it's also not helpful that there are, you know, two units out in the market right now. One of them is significantly compromised. The Series S from, from all that I've heard is a really challenging system to work with for some, especially higher end games. Oh, really? The Series S is a high, hard to work system, especially for higher games, high performing games. There you go. We knew that thing. That thing has trash ass RAM. That is some. So it's horrible. 
what they told us in the beginning of the generation, right? With the um, scalability, series it's be more Ed. powerful than the PlayStation uh, oh, Five. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, that's, not, that's not. No, that's anybody who had a brain knew that wasn't true. But they were saying because it has the same CPU as the Series X, all they had to do because they had a weaker GPU was just lower the resolution. Oh yeah, just lower that's the all resolution. They had to do. Yeah. That's it. Oh, we know lower the resolution. Shit. Target target a lower resolution. Uh, but yeah. devs. How many devs that come out and say it's not as simple as just lowering the resolution? No, it was scalability, remember? It's scalability, right. just like PC is today. Where Well, the problem is, is that PC is, it's using, you know, a, a, a level of GPUs that you're scaling. Your console, there's something going on with that S if it's hard to work with. It's not just scalable, you know? You should have worked on that because you're not even demonstrating that either. But he says right here. He says that the devs say the S is uh, hard. For some, especially higher end games, hey, the Series that? S from, from all that I heard are, you know, two units out in the market right now. One of them is significantly compromised. The Series S from, from all that I've heard is a really challenging system to work with for some, Oops. especially higher end games. I also think that yeah. Xbox customers are used to Game Pass and they're used to the free models in a way that PlayStation customers maybe aren't. And, and that does condition them to spend less money on discrete games. So I think it's a question of just the market economics of what makes sense there. And I think, unfortunately, those don't favor a console manufacturer with a smaller place in the market where, you know, 90% or 80% of the sales from what I've seen might be on other platforms. It just doesn't favor you in that position. Mm, Joe? Well, if you don't have like a Game Pass deal lined up, I feel like the amount of work required to get it up on Xbox may not be worth it if the oh. sales are too low. And I've... I mean, I, I have all I have heard stories of indie games that have sold like literally in like the dozens of units on Xbox, oh like very God. low numbers, where you're just like, oh, I probably shouldn't have bothered doing that. But uh, I think that's just like an indie thing. Whereas for like larger games, <laughs> oh, it's I think it still makes sense, right? Did he okay. just say a Holy dozen? Activate. Oh no! Holy oh, spirit! Oh, he said dozens. Holy spirit! Activate. He Activate. said he heard from some Activate. indie devs that they have sold dozens. What am I? What are they? Holy! Uh, I think that's just like an box, like very low numbers, where you're just like, oh, I probably shouldn't have bothered doing that. Dozens of you. I have heard stories of indie games that have sold like literally in like the dozens of units on <laughs> Xbox, like Selling very emotions. low numbers, where you're just like, oh, I probably shouldn't have bothered doing that, but. Uh, I think that's just like an indie thing. Whereas for like larger games, oh, it's, I think it still makes sense, right? The Xbox, it's still, I mean, I'd still say the series has largely been a success, right? Like a moderate success. Uh, um, no. <laughs> it's difficult to tell. <laughs> Yo, I'm going to choke. Do you see that him is, trying uh, to like uh, hand this off? He's like, He's like, yeah, it's a moderate success. Like, he's just trying to be nice. The Digital Foundry, come on now. Come on. Frog knows what they said. Frog, what, what, they got sent out and they got to play with the friggin' magnets. Wait, with Digital Foundry, you were the ones that said pray for Xbox, didn't you? You know what? We need to we need to roast them in some song. This guy's trying to spin this thing around. We, you know what, dude? We're 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 roasting you on the. You're getting a grindhouse a grindhouse t uh, talking to here. There you go. Grindhouse. In a world. Wait, what did he say? He said what? Yes, right, like a moderate success. Um, Silence. It's difficult to tell. Silence. At this point. Well, guess what? You're getting a grindhouse. Full of pixels and dreams. Where no. heroes rise You're getting and it. fight the schemes. Hit that like button. Yeah. He's getting a grindhouse. Yeah. 300. There we go. Game the magnets. You played with the magnets. Oh, Xbox. You were a monster who had monsters for the fast. Bringing up sorry.
Xbox, they said. That's what they said. The Magnet Man. They went out there. You saw it. I got, they got the tapes. Where is it? We got the tapes. Gaming Grindhouse music video. Shout out to the Ultimate Grinders. We got the tapes. See? They went out there. Here's the video. They went out there to play with the magnets. Here they are. Play the magnets. There it is. Oh, the breakfast. They got, look how excited he is. Where's this guy? Where's the power of the Xbox? It's in the beard. Look, the magnets. Look how nice we put together. We strap it on. Look at the, here's the breakfast cereal. They showed this thing in the friggin' break room. They showed the Series X in the break room with, with the... Why? I need answers. I'm gonna go into a I'm gonna go into a choking fit here. Why every time we see Xbox and studios and inside Xbox, there's always break rooms and breakfast and coffee machines and vending machines. What? Do people work at a desk anymore at that point? Do people work? They didn't have a meeting room. They said, come out here to our breakfast suite. This is where they took them. You know, this is a great place to show Xbox at the kitchen table. You don't have a friggin' meeting room here? What, with all the meeting rooms taken? The cereal showroom. This is where they showed the Xbox to play with magnets. In the friggin' the, the cereal room. This is where you show the most powerful console in the world next to the fucking Cheerios. And the cups of sugar and milk and a, a, a bowl of bananas. What the hell is this? This is where you show your most powerful console in the world. Dude, when PlayStation showed the PlayStation 5, they had a dude wearing goddamn three latex gloves in a freaking suit and tie. Do, do you remember that? The, the, wait a second. We got, we got, I got to, we got to do, here we go, grinders. Hit that like button because you know what's coming. You know what's coming. What the hell, I'm going to go in a goddamn coffin fit. Where's this? Where's the guy? Look at this. You want to see the difference? Here's the difference. We saw what happened when Herman Holtz runs the studios. This is the difference. When Microsoft shows off their console, they show it off next to the bowl of Cheerios. And now let's look at when Sony shows Ball their Chaney, console. What? Frog, look at the videos that I'm showing right here. Look at the difference with these two freaking companies. This is when Xbox shows you. They got the guy who looks like somebody shitting the cereal right here. Oh, and now let's watch shit. Sony show their breakdown of that. Look at this guy. He's Look at this. He's in a sterile room. He's in a sterile room. He's, he, yo, he is like, this is his debut. He's there to show the PlayStation 5. He's discussing it. He takes it apart. Look, he has all the screwdrivers next to him. Look at this. And then this is how Xbox shows off their console. But next to the bowl of Cheerios. Oh, with the three stooges and a bowl of Cheerios. This is the look at this guy. He's showing the little ports. This is one PlayStation shows there. Look at this. He's showing there's a screwdriver to screw everybody. Look at this guy. Look at him. He's a freaking surgeon. Freaking surgeon. This guy got a bowl of bananas behind him. Look at the quality. Look at this. Even the breakdown. Tell me what system are you spending five hundred dollars on? Then we're we'll next to the goddamn Krispy Kreme, the Krispy Kremes. This guy, look at him, freaking surgeon. Look at this. Look at this. They got these clowns. Look at them. Sorry, I can't pay attention to you. I'm trying to decide what fucking cereal I want next. Do you have a low fat milk? This guy's performing surgery on the fucking PlayStation 5. Look at the detail. The fan. Look cool and fans. Guys, take it. Look at this. This guy's explaining it. He goes, you know what? I'm, um, you know what? I, I don't I don't care about the magnets. Uh, I see that you got frosted flakes up there. Do you have any low-fat beer, uh, milk? Can I cut a banana to put in it? They need a freaking waffle maker. Look at this shit. Magnet, how could yeah. This be magnet? Look. This is hey, look. That's what they did. Put this shit together like freaking Lego and squeeze it in the box. This is what they did. And they flew a digital foundry out to go play, have a bowl of cereal. Look at this. This guy's taking apart the freaking CD player now. Holy shit. Look at this. The surgery. Look at this. Taking the processor. Look. 
Look at this. Every one of you in the chat, you spent as big as Microsoft is. Trillion dollar company. They took these guys and they showed them the me. Xbox Ooh. in the fucking cafeteria. They know what's going on. Dude, man. this PlayStation guy, look at him. His, his buttons are all the way up to the neck. Look at this. This guy, look at this. The button, they, they don't even go any higher. His freaking buttons. They got this guy dressed up in a freaking t-shirt. It looked like he didn't uh, freaking uh, brush his beard. You got cereal in the background with fucking bananas. <laughs> and this is where the show Send Xbox. Look, they got this. And you, 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 you look, here's the magnets. Xbox with the magnets. How could this be? Magnets! Hey! And there you go. Hey! 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 Get the hell out of here. Of all of Microsoft. That just wait, that's great. I love the cereal bar. But that's where you're gonna show off your 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 next gen most powerful console to digital foundry. You're gonna bring them into the cafe into the room. This is their is this their meeting room? Do they eat cereal? Like you imagine having a meeting and somebody just scooping cereal in their face. This is this where they have a meetings? Look at this guy. Friggin' surgeon on the side. Another difference. An Xbox. W w Phil, what do we say? Phil, what does he say? W where is it? It means when I think about Xbox, I'm going to think about quality games. We have work to do there. We haven't done our best work over the last few years with our first party output. I'm, yeah, that's always, that that's always been a hit on the. The Magnus. How could this be? Magnus! <laughs> You don't even hype up your games like Hellblade 2. Look, you don't Instead, want it. You have your fans here begging for look, look, you want that PlayStation controller. Goddamn Lucky Tail. He wanted that PlayStation controller. Holy damn. The hell are we doing over there? Quality game. Get the Xbox next to goddamn bowl of bananas. That's the difference. When you respect and appreciate your tech. So tell me again, uh, Magnet Players, goddamn uh, Lego, Lego guys. What was that again? I need to hear it again. I'd still say the series has largely been a success, right? Like a moderate success. No, it's selling worse than the previous generation. It's not a success. It's worse than the previous generation. It's not optimized for its own games. You just went through a whole friggin' video talking about how this thing is not even optimized their own games. Their own games run worse on their own platform. Exactly, Matty Beast. No, it is hilarious. Well, well, Jez, we already know. This is why I said Xbox is dead. We already know that this Xbox, the series systems, is an Xbox One that's more powerful. That's basic what it is. They really didn't put a lot of thought into the UI. They didn't put a lot of thought into a lot of things with this Xbox. So I just look at it as like, you guys really stayed in last generation and just called your new system something else hoping that people wouldn't, you know, they did a Wii, Wii U thing. We were like, shit, we named our last system bad, Xbox One. We're going to name the next system even worse, Xbox Series. And then, and then we're going to even do it worse because we're going to create a, a console that, we can, that we'll say is on the power level of a PS5. But...
it can't really do anything. And oh, by the way, by the way, we're going to create another console that's it's even worse. You know, we're going to create right. one that's really, really weak. I just don't, I don't get where their mind frame is. I don't get how anybody can think that there's any coming back. Because I don't think there's any coming back. I don't think no, there's... No, not even if they I don't think there's a new console, Frog. Like, there's not... No, I don't think there's what any way they come back and they do anything. I think that where they're at is where they're at. I think that they have to play a different game than uh, Nintendo and PlayStation. I think they have to. If they don't play a different game, they... You know, they're going to become third party. We know this. But I think that the the way people re, re, receive them as being a third party publisher can be really dependent on what they do going forward. Mm, I got you. You know, I, I look, I, I keep saying Starfield's coming to PlayStation. I, I was pretty sure it's coming this year. I'm still pretty sure it's coming this year. I think that it's an unfortunate. It's unfortunate that. uh well, let me phrase it. It's fortunate that the games are coming out, but you know, I heard somebody on the podcast, I forgot who it was, that said this the other day. It doesn't matter if these games score well or perform or perform bad. If they perform bad, people will be like, uh, eh, whatever. If they perform well and they get score great, people are like, well, it's coming to PlayStation anyway. I'll just wait. Yeah. And and so for you gotta look at their user base. You're sitting at what, twenty five million people? Uh, nobody really, ca- nobody, you know, consoles sold, and then out of that 25 million consoles that are sold, 80, what is it, 75, 80% is Series S's. That's not good. No. That's not good at all. So it doesn't matter if they come out with their next system and they can take advantage of Steam or it can do this. Or it, can do- it doesn't matter what they do when PlayStation is so close to 60 million. There's, there's nothing they can do at this point. So it doesn't matter, and, I, I, and Phil Spencer said it. It doesn't matter how good uh, our our games are, uh, we're never going to come back. No, but Frog, but, you want to hear what's even interest. worse? Like you were just saying that they can't mm-hmm. do anything more. That brings us to a final topic for the evening, and I got a, a great video here, so you don't want to go anywhere uh, with this one. Where Frog's talking about third party. Oh, shit. So according to uh, the bootlegs, uh, Booty said that he acknowledged... Well, I'll just I will let him say, say as it. well, recently, Microsoft had... They had another town hall. So they had a town hall last month in preparation for that said podcast that they had about their strategy, and now they had Man. another town hall, and Jez said... An all-hands meeting. Another um, one. Or like a live stream internally where they, um, you know, they, they talk about... They talk about the, you know, the situation, the brand, sort of like an internal business update, right? They did one of these recently, and one of the speakers was Matt Booty. Booty. Um, during this panel, um, you know, which I confirmed with multiple people, um, uh, you know, because Microsoft, they, they blasted out broadly. They had, they had to have known this was going to leak, um, you know, so because it, it did go out to a lot of people. Microsoft has hundreds, thousands of employees now, so it's it's not easy to keep a lid on this kind of stuff. And, and that's why I, I suppose they do sound a little bit corporate, even internally, because they do have, they do sort of make them with the view that they probably are going to leak. Because there's so many people, you know, paying attention to it. Just say it, dude. But um, uh, I, one thing that I thought was interesting was Matt Booty apparently at this meeting um, acknowledged that the multi-platform strategy had stressed the brand, you know. And I thought that was interesting, you know, the the fact that this was acknowledged in a fairly, you know, not public way, but um, that they'd, they'd acknowledge the fact that it had stressed the brand. He he specifically also said apparently. Um, we don't think it's damaged the brand, but it has stressed the brand or something along that line. Now, you know, and I'm paraphrasing because I haven't heard I haven't heard it myself. A stressed the brand. Booty came out to an internal meeting and told Microsoft Corporate, whatever the hell they did this live hands-on business update, that the multi-platform strategy has stressed the brand. Didn't damage it, not yet, but it stressed the brand. Which is basically counter, which is hilarious because his own boss said that this is going to strengthen the brand. What that Phil said during that Xbox podcast was putting their games on other platforms will make people realize what Xbox has. If you don't remember, the Xbox podcast stressed the brand, Phil. Uh, stressed the band booty? Uh, I got Phil said otherwise. Um... Let's hear it. Talking about right now, because the 
the fundamental decision driver for any decision that we make, huh. anything we're going to talk about today, is the long-term health of Xbox. Wait a second. Long-term health of Xbox. Booty, a month later, is telling internally that the multi-platform strategy has stressed the brand. But Phil says all this is the, is the future and health of Xbox. That we're running a growing platform that oh. is reaching more players, that our games are having as much success as possible. And I do have a fundamental belief that over the next five or ten years, exclusive games, games that are exclusive to one piece of hardware, are going to be a smaller and smaller part of the game industry. And that's not some great insight, because if you look at the last 10 years and what the biggest games are today, it's a natural place. Whether it's one console and PC, multiple consoles, mobile console and PC, you see big games landing on multiple platforms. And we want to be huh? a great platform for creators that are trying to realize that potential. But Hold it right there, Phil. Is this the same person? Grinders, hit that like button. Phil Ness, 101, here it comes to you. Nobody does it like this. I think we're, you heard we're... that point right there, right? Right? Just one more for, the, for those in the back, because I, maybe you didn't pay attention to that little sentence there. One more. For the next five or ten years, exclusive games, games that are exclusive to one piece of hardware, are going to be a smaller and smaller part of the game industry. And that's not some great insight, because if you look at the last 10 years oh, uh, and what the biggest games are today, it's a natural place. A natural. Whether it's one console and PC, multiple consoles, mobile console and PC, consoles. you see big games landing on multiple platforms. And we want to be a great platform for creators that are trying to realize that potential. But now back to the specifics of the question on these four, four specific titles. We looked at games that are over a year old, so they've been on Xbox and PC for a while. So, uh, Phil, a couple that of that exclusivity, because let's go to you right here. Just a year ago. We'll get into the nitty gritty of the actual show. Listen but to Phil we Ness on here. Plus, uh, one question about that that I'd love to see if I can get some insight on is, um, what's, the kind of, what's the kind of difference in business, in terms of business, is there a difference in the benefit that indie developers get versus, you know, a major studio like a Bethesda making a Starfield? And what is the kind of give and take here that you about have to, Phil here. you know, put factor Third in party. Because I imagine a smaller developer, mm -hmm. you put one Game Pass, naturally my thought is it raises their profile, they get more people in, and generally it's probably good for business. Whereas, I'm probably wrong here, like a game like Starfield, which is a multi-million, probably billion dollar operation. I saw you, Paul's tweet. Yeah. <laughs> I think he said a trillion. Yeah, yeah it's this trillion dollar game. At least a yeah, it's this trillion dollar game. Yeah. You it wasn't, the budget wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's two <laughs> trillion dollars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's this, it's this yeah. extremely expensive game. You put that on Game Pass and it's free as well. Is it still beneficial? Or are you like going, all right, we're going to take a loss on this one to raise the profile What's the balance there? Because surely, like, putting all these major games that are, you're spending millions on developing, marketing, and then making that away for free, Get ready, giving it away for free, and Get then ready, also raising the profile of this service where you can buy it. Gary it Gums, free. this is the build up. Well, you you the, must be taking a hit somewhere, right? I, I don't. I think everybody understands that Game Pass isn't free. Yeah, yeah. I, okay. I get what you mean. But, sure yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, it's, it's not the best marketing that <laughs> yeah. people still say, yeah. oh, for free? It's a cost of doing point. Like, yeah. Well, so. Game Pass is profitable. Xbox is profitable. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. They were all profitable last year, right? 2023. They're all profitable. Profitable, profitable, profitable. All right. Good, Phil. So why are we here now? But wait, he got more. And it's a, I've said sustainable. Yeah. People's like, is that profitable or not? Well, like, well, it, I think people get hung up on like, well, you're spending $70 billion buying something. You're making $70 billion a year, but that's, that's not how it works. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, that's how, yeah, yeah, yeah. But on. Yeah, that is different. See the difference? How the shifted change? The seventy billion and getting it back. He says that is different. That is different because that's what's affecting them now. Now that they You're spent my number one that customer. money, now that's coming to bite them in the ass. But what he's talking about? See the Phil Ness. But listen to what he says about exclusives. I'm going to take it back to console. Okay. Ooh. Back like in, yeah, in take the it olden back. days when there were. <laughs> we just did games on console, and every time we shipped a console we pretended that Sony and Nintendo didn't exist. So anytime you looked at a game, you said, hey, 
you're not shipping this game on the full console base. You're excluding, let's just call it two thirds of the market. We were like not always the same size, but let's just say no, you're not. we're going to go ship Halo 2 and we're Good not game. shipping it on Nintendo. We're not shipping it on Sony. Nobody ever asked me, hmm. hey, how does the P&L for this yeah. game work? When yeah. you're not selling it so. everywhere, you can sell it. Mm-hmm. But now with Game Pass, so paradigm shift. We're, we're just like, yeah, I and people kind of yeah. get stuck, and they yeah, say, right, "Well, wait yeah. a minute, you're not selling every copy that you could sell. How can you afford to go do those games?" Um, the math is actually very, very similar. Yeah. You just, for us, what you did on old school console is you said, "Okay, how many consoles are you going to sell because Halo Two launches? Mm. How long will those players stay on the platform, and how many games mm. will they buy? Right. And does that make it more cost effective to keep the game exclusive to your platform?" And it, like, let's be clear, we could have sold Halo Two on PlayStation, and we probably would have sold a couple of copies. We probably could have done the a same couple, thing yeah. on Nintendo's yeah. platform. Yeah, yeah, one or two. Yeah. Um, so when I look at at Game Pass, we absolutely are going to make money on Starfield, like touch wood that that's the plan. Um, and we will grow Game Pass, and Xbox will be a better platform, both on PC um, and, and console where people play. And for us, it's about expanding our platform reach, uh, and we think important games like Starfield will be catalysts for Game Pass growth on a lot of different platforms. But anytime you're growing the platform, mm. there's always this trade-off with games. We are not a third-party publisher, yeah. right? We do something different with our content like Starfield, but not all the content. Okay. Holy Spirit, activate. Oh no. Holy oh, Spirit, yeah. oh, activate. No. Holy Spirit, activate. 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 You heard that? He's justifying exclusivity, growing Game Pass, keeping things close to their chest, and not putting it on the platforms. I could have sold Halo 2 on a PlayStation, probably sold a couple of copies, but Starfield is going to grow our business. It is going to grow our platform. Let me ask you something, Grinders. This strategy right here. Phil, what was that again? That are trying to realize that potential. But now back to this five or 10 years. Let me start a little bit outside of that, and then I'll get to the four specific. Oh, these four types. Specifically, but I, I think when they come out, any decision that we make, anything we're going to talk about today is the long-term health of Xbox. That our games are having as much success are going to be a smaller and smaller part of the game industry. And that's not some great insight, because if you look at the last 10 years really? and what the biggest games are today, Complete it's a natural opposite. place. Whether it's one console and PC, multiple consoles, mobile console and PC, you see big games landing on multiple platforms. And we want to be a great platform for creators that are trying to realize that potential. But now back to the specifics. Is this a change in Xbox strategy? has been a promise that we've made on our first party games that you can buy our game once you're going to get play across X multiple places um, mm-hmm. whether it's play the games you want with the people you want anywhere you want whether it's content community and cloud whether yep. it's when everybody plays we all win like we've had different taglines different strategy uh, kind of words that we've used but always with this view that Xbox want, is a platform for creators who want to reach the most players. No. Um, our investments in xCloud, our investments in franchises like Minecraft and now Call of Duty and other large... No, no, no. So, how is this, Phil, that talked about how Game Pass growth will offset our abilities to put this game elsewhere? Guess what happened? So, Grinders, let me... Th- so, one more time. I you looked at a game, you said, hey... When I looked at a game, I wasn't like, how are you making your money back since you're not shipping on PlayStation, he says. Game, watch. Now for this yeah. game work mm, when yeah. you're not selling it so. everywhere you can sell it. <laughs> but now with Game Pass... It's a paradigm shift. We're, we're just like... Yeah. With Game Pass, Game Pass is the thing that is going to allow them to cover their losses by not putting it on those, right? Yeah, and people kind of get stuck and they yeah, say, right, well, wait yeah. a minute, you're not selling every copy that you could sell. How can you afford to go do those games? Um, the math is actually very, very similar. Yeah. It's, you just, for us, what you did on old school console is you said, okay, how many consoles are you going to sell because Halo 2 launches? Mm. How long will those players stay on the platform and how many games mm. will they buy? Right. And does that make it more cost effective to keep the game exclusive to your platform? And it, 
like, let's be clear, we could have sold Halo 2 on PlayStation and we probably would have sold a couple of copies. A couple probably could have done the same. A couple of copies. Is he being pandering? Like, yeah, we could have sold a couple of copies. Just to think, less than a year later, this man is humbled to invest in maybe future iterations of those, so sequels to those, or just other. And as they've realized their full potential on Xbox and PC, we see an opportunity to utilize the other platforms as a place to just drive more business value out of those games, allowing us to invest in maybe future iterations yeah. of those, or sequels yeah, to those. Jack. Oh, all of a sudden you went from selling a couple of copies on a PlayStation to now we're going to put this more places to expand our business. Hmm. He's a little pompous here in like, oh yeah, I could have sold a couple on, on, uh, on PlayStation. Something on yeah. Nintendo's yeah. platform. Yeah, yeah, one or two. Yeah. Um, so when I look at, at Game Pass, we absolutely are going to make money on Starfield, like touch wood, that that's the plan. Um, and we you will touch the wrong game wood. Game Pass Pause. and Xbox Pause. will be a better platform, both on PC yeah. um, and, and console where people play. And for us, it's about expanding our platform reach. Uh, and we think important games like Starfield will be catalysts for Game Pass growth on a lot of different platforms. But anytime you're growing the platform, mm. there's always this trade-off with games. We are not a third-party publisher, yeah. right? We do something different with our content like Starfield, but not all the They're not a third-party publisher. Because he bet on Starfield. So what happened since this interview to the Xbox podcast. What happened since then? That humbled him now. What happened? Gaming. Starfield did not grow nothing. People went out and just bought Starfield on Steam. And it just did what it did. It didn't have legs. It didn't sell for, for a long time. It wasn't on the MPDs for months and months after it sold. It had no legs. And it primarily was driven by sales on Steam. Did it grow Game Pass? Nope. And then the CFO happened. Phil. You're walking around telling us that Starfield is going to be a catalyst to grow Game Pass. To increase Game Pass sales. You heard Sarah Bond on that interview. It was $35 million. They haven't grown anything. And then on top of it, if you remember, here he goes again. Remember this with Starfield? Phil says he can recoup the $7.5 billion Bethesda purchase without putting games on PlayStation Bill Spencer says Microsoft can afford 7.5 billion purchase all on its own. What happened? What happened? He knocked on the wrong wood. Whoa. Pause. That's what happened. Where's the lamb sauce? He missed out on the lamb sauce. Lucio says Starfield is the most important game in Xbox history. Yeah, because it changed them. Let me get Game Night 1, 2, 3, man. Yo, thank you, Game Night. For the five, he goes, I don't know why Phil Ness tries to project his problems. Consoles aren't growing, less exclusives, etc. An industry issue. Sony and Nintendo are fine. Yeah, and I think this Nintendo Sony are finding their way how to use the industry and what to do with it. But like I was going off on from Friday about was that when you're part of the gaming industry and you're not doing your part, the industry is not growing because you checked out and you're not doing your job, Phil. You're not selling consoles like you were or expected to. You're not making great games that we expect to make people buy more. You're not doing your part, Microsoft and Xbox, 
in the gaming industry. So when you go make claims the game industry is not growing, well, guess why? It's because you are sabotaging it. Sony is there holding up the whole friggin' business. Nintendo has been holding it up, and they are, they're on the last legs before a next console. They're doing yep, their part as best they can. You're the one. There were three manufacturers to console, and one checked the fuck out. You. So how are you saying mm-hmm. console sales are not growing? Yeah, you're damn right, because you fucking, you're the anchor to the whole goddamn console industry right now. Minus 47% year over year. Who's supposed to make up those numbers? You the one that's hurting the industry. You're the one. The industry is hurting because your representation sucks. You're not making great games. You're making excuses. You're not making console sales and making developers happy to develop for your console. You ain't doing any of that stuff. You are self-sabotaging the gaming industry and using that as a, as what? As a method to show why they should choose you? Nobody's choosing you. Even after all the money you spent, nobody choosing you, Phil. And when you going around going like, oh, yeah, well, Starfield's going to grow this and Starfield's going to do this and we're not a third-party publisher, to just turn that around and now become a third-party publisher, being pompous, going, yeah, I could have sold a couple of Halo 2 copies on PlayStation, but I didn't need to because I did it on my platform. Oh, I guess now you need a couple of copies sold of Pentiment, right? You need a couple of copies of Sea of Thieves to be sold? You just need a couple? Yeah. You need them to keep your brand relevant. That's why you said you're making those decisions, dude. It's to make the Xbox content. part their future. What was that, Phil? Why? To get them more interested in Xbox. We- and what's crazy that started us this whole thing, not only was there Phil Ness... But then, Frog, there was bootiness because Frog, Phil said here, we think there's a good brand value in Xbox by putting their games on PlayStation and Switch. And just a month later, Booty says that strategy is putting stress on the brand. Is that what Phil says right here in the subtitles? This is good for the brand of Xbox. Of course. Listen. The left and right hand are not even talking to each other. They stumble no, not over anymore. The, do they talk and talk? There's no freaking games behind the seven of bitch. There's nope. no gameplay of Hellblade. There's nothing about the games. It's all just we're hot, we're cold. They're freaking Katy Perry song. Mm-hmm. There it is. Xbox brand was stressed, Booty says. Phil says this is good for the brand and the future of Xbox. Phil says they're not a third party. We don't need to put games on PlayStation. We'll grow Game Pass, and that will be fine for Starfield. We don't need to put their games everywhere. We're not a third-party publisher. I give you Exhibit A, B, C, and D. Area is saying that we need what's over on PlayStation. Dude, they are all over the friggin' place. And guess what? They don't know what they want. They don't know what they want. They're chasing, because they're chasing a pipe dream. They're chasing a future that doesn't exist. And they're trying to make it a reality, and all they're doing is stumbling over their current present. They're so focused on trying to grab the next thing that they can't grab anything right now. They are all over the friggin' place. And I think a major part of it is that if you believe that Starfield was gonna do what it was gonna do, you should have been shouting from the rooftops and not hiding that game behind closed doors and just giving that little 20 minute show in June and thinking that was all that we needed to see and taking down videos that showed the load screens leading up to it and giving it out to select reviewers before and people didn't get that. Now, if you needed Starfield to be that thing that really showed that, then you should have got behind it. But you didn't. You hid the game. And you put it out there it sold on Steam and dropped right off. And now, there you are. Just completely changing your whole tune from what you said in just last year. 
where you're what? We absolutely are going to make money on Starfield, like touch wood that that's the plan. Um, and we will grow Game Pass and Xbox will be a better platform, both on PC um, and, and console where people play. And for us, it's about expanding our platform reach. Uh, and we think important games like Starfield will be catalysts for Game Pass growth on a lot of different platforms. But anytime you're growing the platform, mm. there's always this trade off with games. We are not a third party publisher. Yeah. There's always a trade off with games. And if you notice in here, that's a good Joe Shrive. Enjoy your Series X. Enjoy it. You play with the magnets. What he's saying here. I'm not saying hate on the Xbox. I'm talking about the messaging for them. And what I'm saying will make Xbox a better brand. But they don't care. They don't care. Because this guy says that they're not a third party publisher. They don't need to put their games everywhere. They don't need to. Starfield's gonna make money. But listen to what he's saying here. He's saying the platform. And he's talking about growing Game Pass. What's interesting, if you remember the history, when they went to PC, they were Xbox console and Xbox Windows store, right? They were growing the platform. Right? I guess they didn't, dude. I don't know. If they made all this money on... I What I think is that Starfield didn't grow Game Pass the way they needed it to grow. And what a lot of people did was wound up buying the game. And now he knows that they got to sell it. And that CFO saw that. Because remember, he just says right here. Now, if you listen, he says right here, we'll make money. A couple copies. Probably could have done the a same couple, thing yeah. on it. Yeah. Right? We do something different with our content like Starfield. But not all. It's about it. That that's the plan. Um, and we will grow Game Pass, and See? Xbox will be a better platform, both on PC um, and, and console where people play. Uh -huh. And for us, it's about expanding our platform reach. Expanding our platform reach. So he's speaking about growing Game Pass right here. That's the platform. Uh, and we think important games like Starfield will be catalysts for Catalyst. Game Pass growth on a lot. Of there you go. Catalyst for Game Pass growth. Of different platforms, but anytime you're on a lot of different platforms, and then he says it right here this is the risk that him and Booty took, and the CFO didn't like. We're growing the platform, mm. there's always this trade off with games. We are not a third party publisher. Yeah, right. there you go. He says it right there. They're taking a risk with Starfield to grow the platform of Game Pass. That is what they were talking about to grow the platform of Game Pass. We're not a third-party publisher. That's the point of it. And then goes on to go put games on PlayStation and completely counters that whole statement right here. We'll end up on other platforms and give us the ability to continue to invest in them. We think that's great for the business and great for the communities. More players to play with. Where was that talk? More players. What's Starfield? Where was that? He thinks he's just going to sell a couple of copies. Where was the, the more players? And why even have this podcast if Xbox was profitable, Game Pass is profitable, we made a decision that Starfield is fine, it's going to grow Game Pass, it's going to be a catalyst to grow our platform. <clears throat> if it was all fine and dandy about seven months ago, what happened? That was sitting here at this podcast with this pivot strategy. Booty saying just this last week or so in a, another town hall that putting their games on other platforms has stressed the Xbox brand, which was different from what they said a month ago, where this is going to make the Xbox brand stronger. They're all over the place. But the only thing, see it twisted, the only thing was that the Starfield didn't do what it needed to do. And we saw that. I think Starfield just sold. <coughs> and it didn't grow Game Pass. And he said it. And there's other interviews where Game Pass didn't grow. PC Game Pass. Sarah Bond says right there, 45 million, 35 million or whatever the hell of Game Pass. It didn't grow. That's combining everybody, which they did in September. Game Pass didn't do what it needed to do. And the CFO saw that stuff. And he's like, yo, Starfield didn't make us money. We did not get enough subscribers to offset the money that we're spending. We need the other ones. Now, the last point I want to make on this, 
was that when he's talking about growing the platform, right back where I said about when they went to PC, it was the Windows Store and Xbox. That was one platform. They had to break that to put their games on Steam. Remember, Steam doesn't grow their platform. Steam is outside of the Xbox ecosystem. It's a game <coughs> that they're selling to Steam and losing royalties to Steam. Whereas if they sell it in the game Xbox game store, they make their money back on that stuff. They don't have to share any royalties to anybody on that. So they had to break their ecosystem to a go to where the games sell on Steam. Now, this Xbox podcast, he's talking about platform growth of Starfield being growing Game Pass PC and growing Xbox Game Pass. Then, here, changes the whole tune, and now he's putting those games that we talked about, Sea of Thieves, Grounded, Pentiment, Hi-Fi Rush on PlayStation. Guess what? He is breaking outside of their ecosystem. He is breaking their ecosystem and putting it on there. Those games don't grow their Game Pass platform. They keep people away from Game Pass because they're bringing the games to where the game is us. The same strategy and pivot they had to make for Steam. Nobody was coming to the Windows Store to buy Xbox games. So they had to go where the game is are. Nobody from Sony and PlayStation, PlayStation, Nintendo were coming to Xbox for the console, for Game Pass. Put the game where the gamers are. And that's what this whole meeting's about. And Booty is right. The Xbox brand is stressed. Because you didn't even have enough time to establish these games as quality games and representation of your brand. You're just dumping them over there. And on top of that, you're making those games better over there. So you're the best third-party publisher that they're seeing right now. Your games are running better on your competition than on your own platform. How are you supposed to sell your own platform when your games are running better over there? And it has nothing to do with having more time to develop them. Ghostwire Tokyo was on PlayStation before it came to your platform. Digital Foundry said it still was not good when it when it released on the Xbox a year later. Still with trash ass ray tracing and bad performance. That's your game. That's your studio. That's your company. You own them. I don't get it, dude. But there it is. They're all over the place. And is the brand stress? You damn right. They're floundering out there. They don't know which end is up. That's why now you need to rally people around great games. But are you hyped up? Are you hyping Hellblade 2? I don't see it. Still talking. Talking, talking, talking. And you basically became a third-party publisher. And that's what this podcast was about. You're putting the games directly on your competition. When you just said six months ago, you are not a third-party publisher. You take, you're take you putting games in your service to grow your platform. You're not a third-party publisher, right from your mouth. You do things differently. Now, there are games that are already out there that you support, but you specifically say... School console, as you said, okay, how many consoles are you going to sell because Halo 2 launched? There's always this trade-off with games. We are not a third-party publisher. Yeah. Right? We do something different with our content. Like There you go. Now they do have other field, but not all the content. Obviously, Minecraft ships on Minecraft, on which was already everywhere to begin with. That's his, his, his and now he's going to use Call of Duty as their things. The brand distress. The brand had no identity, and now it's diluted even further. So booty is and now what and what's interesting is that they had another town hall again. So they, I think, they are even having a problem keeping morale up within the company. Frog, your final thoughts on that. Do you think that they're having these town halls, like these updates, these business updates, talking about their brand? I think they need to keep that Xbox team, whoever's there, motivated. Because I think that they're... I, I feel like that their motivation internally has been stressed. Um, What I basically think is, since they started purchasing 
Bethesda, Activision Blizzard, and all these other companies. I think that the people that they've purchased within them is having conversations. Good you know, point. looking at Toys for Bob and all these other. I think that it's bigger than we know. And mm-hmm. I think they're just telling them, like, look, you guys acquired us. You guys basically like position and we want to make money and we want to make games. We just don't want to be acquired by you and not do anything. So many, so many things have transpired since the Activision Blizzard deal. And a lot of people are basically going to admit to it now. It wasn't a deal. At, at the end of the day, my, my opinion is it's, it's kind of one of those things they are like, we're going to hold on for as long as we can before we really, we're going third party, but we're going to make it seem like, and we're going to hold on. Just go third party. Just do it. At this point, you know, I, I think they'll, they'll do this console generation out. And they even may come out with another console, but I think that everything comes day and day to every place. They can't continue to act like, hey, we're going to come back. We're going to be. They can't compete. So at the end of the day, this that's what it's coming down to. I think that I think it's a bigger. I think it's a bigger deal that they. The quicker they go third party, I think the more money they make, and I think it, the the better it looks on them. I think the longer they wait to not pull the trigger and say, hey, our games are everywhere. And they can do it in the way they're doing now, but they don't have to do day and date. But I think little by little, we're going to see seeing more and more games. When they asked Phil Spencer, hey, Starfield, one of the games, the four games coming, he said no. Yeah, at that moment, it wasn't. Yeah. But when it comes by the end of this year and we're sitting there like he lied, it's not that he lied. He knows how to freaking, he knows the word game. Mm-hmm. All these people about hold the line and do this. They know the days are numbered. Yeah. There's no more Xbox. But I, I think Unfortunately... You- I want to say, well, unfortunately, I, I I think that just all the partners are talking, and I think the Bethesdas and all these I, other people are like, point. look, you know, I yeah. was listening to Chad Thresh Roundtable, man. I'm glad I was back. I was listening to the, the Roundtable. I was driving this weekend, mm-hmm. and you know, one of the guys, oh, I forgot what his name was. One of the guys on the podcast was saying that he was listening to one of Cole Mariotti's um, podcasts, and what he was saying was that these third party, de- these devs that they acquired who are used to be putting games on third party, apparently, and again, I got to go listen to Call of Mario Eyes, but what he was saying is that they were given sales targets, that they had to sell the game. And they said, but you're putting it in Game Pass. How are we supposed to hit these kind of sales targets? And they kind of said, well, in order for us to hit these sales targets, we got to go put these games somewhere else. You can't just put these games in Game Pass and expect us to hit big sales because... It's been stated in the court documents that Game Pass cannibalizes sales. So these th- these devs are seeing like, hey, I can't be in Game Pass and make sales to make back the money that you want at the same time. I and, and, and for me to do that, I got to put this game on other devices. I we got to sell this somewhere else. So if that's true, then you can see this. But I do think what you're saying too. I think a lot of these third parties like Bethesda, like Zenimax, and even now with Call of Duty and Toys for Bob. I do think that a lot of these developers that they acquired, these publishers, were third-party publishers, and you heard Pete Hines. He wasn't a big fan of being told, don't put this game on PlayStation. You know, he's like, well, when they bought us, they told us to stop doing it. You could tell that they don't want to be constrained to Xbox, especially when Xbox is a install base. It's not the biggest one. It's not the most lucrative. It's not everywhere unless you're in the Game Pass, which means you don't sell your game. And that's where the, the 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 caveat comes. It's like in order for you to be everywhere in Mike Phil's vision and this Xbox vision, you got to be in Game Pass. But maybe you don't want to be in Game Pass. You want to sell your game, and and especially if they're asking you to sell your game for a certain amount, Game Pass can't be it. And Game Pass is not growing. So the offset that he speaks about in that interview, where he's like. Hey, you know, we make decisions. Starfield's going to grow our Game Pass, grow our platform, grow Xbox, grow PC Game Pass. And did it? It didn't. It must have not because they wouldn't be putting their games on other platforms. If if everything was a success and Game Pass was growing, they would say, yo, put more games in Game Pass to drive growth. Instead, he's like, guys, let's stop putting games on PlayStation that once game were pass, an appeal for Game Pass, now they're on PlayStation right. and Switch. Take the, the Game way Pass the model doesn't work. It doesn't work because you can't take the money that you normally spend on a big project and, and get the same quality of game. A, that's A. B, the other thing that people aren't realizing is 
is most of the games that are going to come out, it's, it takes a while to make. So if you do have a, as Phil Spencer says, a double A, possibly triple A game that comes out, I mean, just look at how long it's taken Hellblade to come out. And if we get that game, you can beat that game in six or eight hours. It's like, damn, it took this long to, to beat a game in six or eight hours. I think games like those are, um, I don't know. I, I just think we're, at, we're in a time frame that the, they, they need more uh, uh, visibility to the projects they have. And being on an Xbox in a 20... 25 24 million install base with your new system does nothing for you you know when you when you sit there and you say hey we're we're at 30 something million game pass subscribers and but then you you backtrack and say yeah we sold you know you found out they sold 23 million consoles 20 23 25 million consoles that means that the majority of your game pass subscribers are between you know your pc your xbox one people aren't j- going from xbox one to, to series systems at all they're going from xbox one to playstation 5 that's what it looks like mm. you're not growing your audience people are like screw it yeah screw it that people are like screw it. we're just gonna go on ahead and do what we gotta do go get a playstation 5 and guess what all these fickled pc people will sit there and tell you they want all the playstation games they they're they're stupid. They're they're fanboy. They're Xbox fanboys. They they once love Xbox. Well, there's not much and the left prob- now. And, and, the, and, the, pro- and the problem so and the the problem is they talk about PC all the time. But most of the PC guys that are in the console space talking were Xbox guys. They're not PlayStation Nintendo guys. They're Xbox guys. Mm-hmm. Let's make that clear. Most of the well, people who are talking about PC, well, PC, they PC, they told people to go over Xbox there, dude. Guys. They told people yeah, to go yeah, over yeah, there. Yeah. And, and somebody they, says, and yeah, Man Overboard it. says he thinks Hellblade 2 is going to be the nail in the coffin if it fails. I don't know, no, man. I don't think they have I don't think they have high expirations for Hellblade 2. I don't think Hellblade fails. I think that it just comes out and, A, it doesn't sell well. It's kind of, it, it is what out. it is. I'm and gonna it comes out. I'm going to play it, but Hellblade I said it I said I said it before. If it comes out and it does well, we'll be like, oh, I'll just play it when it comes to PlayStation. Oh, if it comes out damn. and it doesn't do well, oh, that's if what it they comes created. out. And, look, and if it comes out and it doesn't do well, it's like whatever. Yeah, that's what they created, that, dude. But we're at that point now. We're at that point now where and you know, I've heard a couple of people who are really diehard Xbox people say the same thing. The game comes out and it does well. People will be like, oh, I'll just wait for the better version on PlayStation. Well, that's a problem out, that they w- need. And that's what Digital Foundry is saying. Like, that's a problem they need to yeah. address. They can't make better versions on other platforms. They got to make that on the be- yeah, on their but, platform. But, but on the, it's going to happen. We've seen this with most of the games that have come to PlayStation later or been on PlayStation first. That, that version just seems to run better. And I'm going to tell you why, Jazz. People may say it's the skew. You have a Series X and an S. Your S is your best selling console, so the developers are really making sure that S version works the best, and they're just like, okay, the X version's here. And so I, I don't care what anybody says. You can't make a console. This Microsoft's biggest, biggest, biggest Achilles heel this generation was the Series S. They oh, yeah. shouldn't have did that. I think they should have just stuck with the X. Said, "Hey, first two years for that thing," and then just said, "You can make X games." Yes, like that. first two years. It, yes, and see what they should have done. Yeah, should have did is, and and this would have hurt it. This would have really hurt it worse because if that had done the series S first, that would have definitely hurt it, being so much weaker against the PS5. But what they should have did is just came out that series X, let that thing just do what it was gonna do, and then maybe. Let Say okay, we saw the market because once they show the Series X, and they then they they talked about the Series S and being a weaker console, and then Sony Sony showed their PS5, and then you know four ninety nine. We're like, oh okay, we expect that price, but then they showed a digital three ninety nine. That they just won, they won again. No matter no matter if they, if more people buy the disc version or not, once you put three ninety nine on one of your consoles. And you and you and you talk about the powers and the specs, and you and Microsoft sitting there talking about, well, we got a two ninety nine console. This is, it doesn't matter. At yeah, the end of the day, they did those agree, the really egregious sales on sales over the week over the over the Christmas holiday. They didn't, it didn't move the console. Like so, I, I do they they mm-hmm. are they are definitely in a, a strategy pivot again, and we'll see what the hell they do. But 
You know, right now the right. brand is stressed, and Phil said that this was supposed to strengthen the brand. And Booty a month later saying that the Xbox brand is stressed. I don't know how this strengthens the brand. Internal employees, like he didn't wait, say this. Wait, wait, what strengthens the brand? Being multiplied? Yes, Phil said at that. Yes, that it will podcast, strengthen. The, it will strengthen it will the brand. Strengthen the future of Xbox, but then just a month later, as far Booty as as far as a publisher, saying, not as far as a game well, console. Booty just said internally that to their their hands-on meeting that this has stre- stressed the xbox brand that's what he said yeah. that's what they're saying yes so and i would agree it will it, stress the, the xbox no, brand but has. as them become a publisher it, will, it has stressed the xbox brand by going yeah. to other platforms that they should just become it. a publisher he says it stressed it so Hey, it, you know why? Because it makes it harder for them to have an identity when they put the stuff that they they that would identify them. Yeah. On that. But you know, with they that, have no, they uh, have no identity. They don't, and you know, they never nope, spent that time anymore. to establish that identity and get behind games. And it's yep. always about the games, and they have really avoided that part of it because whenever it comes to games, they don't talk about it. Now, I agree. Who reported this? Uh, Jez Corden on Xbox uh, on Xbox Two. He, I played the video. He uh, he said that he heard internally, you know, from from people that had this town hall that uh, that Booty said that it stressed the Xbox brand from Booty, not for anybody else. Booty had and, and didn't say this to the people. He said this to the uh, employees, his internal employees. You know, it took Jez a while to get to it, but I'll play the audio again, you know, just as as a final thought here. You know, I, not public way. Apparently, at this meeting, um, acknowledged that the multi-platform strategy had stressed the brand. You know, and I thought that was interesting. You know, the the fact that really at this meeting, uh, I, one thing that I thought was interesting was Matt Booty. Apparently, at this meeting, um, acknowledged that the multi-platform strategy had stressed the brand. You know, and I thought that was interesting. You know? There you go. At their internal hands-on meeting, Booty said that this has strategy has stressed the brand. So he said it, and Phil was going on to the public. This is where you know this is the same thing. Have those court documents? Phil was like, "Oh yeah, everything's great," and then you go in there, it's like, "Yeah, we suck." You know, court documents show that internally, we're gonna spend them out of business. He went, Booty went, Booty went full ass. He went from we're gonna try to spend Sony. <laughs> dude, full he went ass. full moon, full moon ass. He went. He went from we're gonna try to spend Sony out of business to now going third party has stressed the Xbox brand. Man, oh man, booty. Try to hit that like button. We are going out. It's booty time. It's stressed. Let me see that booty drop. Booty, booty, booty drop. Hey man, booty went full, full, uh, full two cheeks on that one. But anyway, grinders, we got through the gaming grindhouse tonight. <clears throat> Thank you, Frog and Link, for coming in and saving my voice. Uh, no so problem. I pulling the, the yeah, it's been crazy allergy wise and just just uh, feeling out of it today. But yeah, I want to thank everybody, all the new members, the super chats, and also thank you again to all the new subscribers here. We're on our way to three thousand, and you help me get through the show. And uh, you know, definitely, if you like the music that's played here, we the ultimate grinding tier. If you got a VIP, you could upgrade to the ultimate tier, the grinds pass, and you get all the music day one. I got three more songs coming your way this week. Um, and there's going to be a special one uh, because uh, birthday is next week. So the next Grindhouse, Gaming Grindhouse on Monday, will be nice. a Gaming Grindhouse birthday celebration. So that one will be coming. Um, but uh, feeling uh, special. I really like this song that, that I made, and I want to share it with the VIP. So if you didn't get a VIP, you can upgrade to that. Ultimate Grind is get all the songs day one and have access to all of them. So upgrade if you would like to there. But um, stay tuned tomorrow. There'll be a, a pr- world premiere live gaming grindhouse music ex- uh, extravaganza for all the members, not just the ultimates, but all the members. And then the ultimates will get their songs exclusively the rest of the week as well. Game- Grinds pass is a value to keep giving. Phil, I'll show you the way it's done. 
give people quality content. That's what you do, Phil. But anyway, Grinders, I want to thank you again. Hit that like button. Share it out. We'll play one of those uh, songs here. You know, um, a lot of answers could be answered. You don't have to worry about what's going on over at Xbox when you could just buy a PS5, I guess, right? Well, with that, thank you. Happy free birthday. Stay tuned. There'll be more shows this week. We'll get next week. But here we go, Grinders. Go play some games. That's where I'm going. Now they shout out and proud. They got the most important cloud. Yeah. Yeah. Just buy a PS5 and you will see. see. The level of quality is a game changer. Graphics to the gameplay. It's a whole Get a PC to wait you say I'm tired of the same old game playing on repeat gotta break free gotta find something sweet did I hurt about a brand new friend a clear a dream PS5 it's the answer Thank you again, Grinders. Hit that like button, share it out. Talk to you guys soon. Subscribe to the Gaming Grind House.